I was going to uh, branch off from oh. the colorism issue and uh, saying that oh, you know, the black women and talk about this the uh, rap man. Who's that? Uh, rap man is the dude that did uh, what's it? Uh, Shiro story. story. So he's been um, picked My up G. by uh, Rock, Rock Nation. Rock no. Nation. That's Jay Z's. Uh, no company. Idea you're talking about, bro. Well, he did this thing called Cheryl's story. Y- I, you really like it. Part well, one, two, yeah. and three. You really like I it. I still haven't seen any of them, but I'm going to. But it's it's highly loaded. All right. But anyways, so he's doing his first film now. He's done a casting thing, and he's got a, a few different parts here. Karina, who it was the white <laughs> stroke Mediterranean, is classed as popular, fun, and adores male attention. Cheyenne. Uh, who's the black stroke Asian stroke mixed race is strong straight talking young lady no nonsense and not one to mess with and uh, Leah who is who is definitely the black uh, is perhaps a non-obvious beauty with a good soul you see she's confident and knows her own mind and in underlined she must be able to sing. <laughs> nah, fuck <laughs> it, no. <laughs> Is he kind of pissed off now? That, that makes it seem more worse. Wait, I, because, I know, because I know the story, the background bit. That's why I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Shucking and driving. That's why I didn't man. say nothing when you look was like, well, why, why? But they took the piss. <laughs> <laughs> Must be able to sing, you know. Fuck you know, bro. Did, did that casting breakdown come from a, the actual production well. company? Yeah. I own casting. Can you dance? The non obvious, yeah, the non obvious beauty. What the fuck is a non obvious beauty? What does that mean? It's that, don't it? Yes, 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 yes. It's a celebration, bitches, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, rodents and frogs in my throat. Welcome to episode 100 of season two of the Eloquently Say Nothing podcast. Uh, congratulations, guys. We made it to 100. Second time around. Well, not second time around, really. We didn't do 100 first time, but still. Anyways, we're here. I am Stavros Boss. You can catch me at Stavros Boss everywhere. And in the room with me to celebrate our centurion. If that's how it's called, <laughs> we have well the one that was on it first. That actor, are you web singer now or that actor? What are you? I'm just here. Okay. Fucking late. That's what he's. D a t a c t o r on Instagram and Twitter. Um, web slinger says he sends his greetings. He's not here, but um, let me quickly just say to the listeners, your ears are blessed, and we thank you for that. The five gentlemen in the room, we salute to that. Thank you for the hours, the minutes, and seconds you've listened. Thank you for all the comments and laughter we've given. Thank you to the brothers in the room with me. Thank you for your soliloquy. ESN, we're back again. Hopefully, we'll do better. And then, and then, and then. Okay. You sound like you're trying to make up with somebody. Hopefully, we'll do better. <laughs> Making up to the listeners. Oh, well, that's very nice. Thank you very much for your your, your poem. I think. But who's it for? Us or for, or for the listeners? It's for everybody. It's for us and them. Okay. Well, what's your socials, bro? Oh, you did it. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, next. At big well hello on Insta. Mic. At big well hello on Twitter. Gosh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. At big well hello is there. And we also have... Um, Just pick someone. I'm trying to remember people's names, man. Because really? Simple Simon. Simple Simon's there. See, this is the problem. <laughs> I would like nothing more than to have sexual intercourse with Jacqueline. If she were to mutually consent, I would be sure to use a condom. I do not say this to besmirch her good name, nor do I wish to bring attention to her character. I say so because the ecstasy of good sex is juxtaposed only to the burn or the possible death of an STD. (laughs) (laughs) That was a poem by the right honourable Frisco Kid. The name of the poem is Rubbers. The original incantation of this poem goes as such. I want the more and more prevention better and secure. I want to see that girl next door. But make sure I have them in store. Check it. Me want to call for Jacqueline, but me have a job for my robots, for my robots. Sex nice, but the eight sting. We make you die like flowers, die out like flowers. Me 
want to juke off a Jacqueline, but me have to call for the robbers, for my robbers. Sex nice, but the oh ears sting. Goodness. Make me die like flowers, die, die out like flowers. flowers. You, you know what? It's getting bad, you know? Because you know how many times I heard that song and I did not know a word that man was saying. <laughs> I don't know what song he's singing. You hear it rage all the time and yeah. I did not know that that was the, what the man was sing, 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 um, singing. You're not meant to know anyways. At Simple Simon FP on Twitter, that's where you can get at me. Yer. My all missus right. did one song with me the other day about Royal. That Royal song. Mm. She said the lyrics and she goes, you said say the next lyrics. I just looked at her like, I don't know anything else but that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything else but that, bruv. What do you mean? I don't know what song that is. She's right. She's, She's right. right. Yes. And I want her in, in my, my life. life. I never knew anyone. I never kind. Is this a new song? No. Uh-huh. It's an old tune, man. Is it? Yeah. It, does, it does go deep like that. And I know what? No, no, it's not that song. <laughs> is that a Bashman? Uh, uh, it's called the Bashman. Taurus Taurus Ryan. Ryan. You've heard it, Stav. Yeah, but she's okay. royal, so royal. Yeah. I want her in, in my life. life. I never knew anyone. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it, and I'll, I'll, I'll add it to the Spotify playlist. And there you go. Yeah. All right. We also have Mr. Wolf. Mm-hmm. Did it. Any mafia are you la? Only tongue, I fear I ye egg me. Need to re no egg me, lo lang be. Any mafia are you la? Only tongue, I fear I ye egg me. Need to re no egg me, lo lang be. Whoever wants to be wealthy must be prepared to be to be inconvenienced because wealth reside right inside of filthiness. So the way I can explain it to you is <clears throat> for anyone to be rich or wealthy or get on in life, you will be faced with trials, temptations, insults, challenges of various types. But you must never, ever give up. If you go through the stories of all great men of today, they went through hell in life, but they never gave up. Okay. And that is this week's Yoruba proverb. Is that your one? And that was presented by Mama Wolf. Do you know what gave me pleasure? Why? Mama when Wolf. she sucked her teeth. Why did you randomly have a little girl? Yeah, that <laughs> was the best bit. She was. She said one of the sentences. She just went. <laughs> I think because maybe she might have uh, didn't say it as fluently as she might have maybe. wanted to. She just felt like she was just vexed about that sentence there, boy. Yeah, man. maybe. But that is uh, this week's uh, Yoruba proverb presented by Mama Wolf, and I might get her to do proverbs every now and then. I mean, one of my favorite uh, Yoruba words is "nitori." Nitori, and yeah, it just kind of um, helps me to be more fluent in the language. You know what I mean? I'm not as fluent as I like to. And I, when I'm around my parents, I always get them to speak to me in the Yoruba dialect. But anyway, this is Mr. Wolf. You can catch me, a.k.a. Mr. Wolf on Insta, a.k.a. underscore Mr. Wolf on Twitter. And let's do this. 100, the centorial episode. Is Trump great? Because what trials and tribulations has Trump gone through? Well, he tried to grab the pussy and... Uh, and he didn't get it. And he didn't get it. Is he great? Well, he has to. He has to walk around them blacks in it. He don't like them. That's for him. His trials are tribulations. I think. I think he's prominent. Would he ever go down as a great man? I'm not sure. That's a good, that's a good question. Hmm? Does, every, does making your does making it to that type of level make you what automatically makes you? Does anything defaultly make you a great person? Making a president of a country does that not make you a great man? Mm, what I makes don't you? Think what, so. What's what's the what's the there's, definition? There's of a, great a lot man? of presidents that are not great. Yeah, but what's the definition of a great person? Isn't that yeah, a bespoke to person? Yeah, subjected to the person. Yeah, if I say you're great, then I think that qualifies you, basically. But there's many people that will say that <laughs> um, Trump is great. That's it. But a, a, a lot of his followers would, without a doubt, that he's a great man and he's doing great things. A lot of people that dislike him would still say that in certain aspects of like certain areas, he's great at certain things. And I would go as far as to say that he has gone through some trials and tribulations. Probably. He's bankrupt a couple of times still, isn't it? Mm, first world problems. What were we talking about just before we recorded? No, I said we were talking about it on the pod. Was it the Celine Dion thing? That's yeah, story. yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, just just to uh, pop, anyone got anything to say before we get into Celine Dion? No? Great. Happy birthday. To whom? To us. Anniversary. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If okay. it is anything. But anyway, go on. Um, 
All right, so Celine Dion has a new clothing line for infants and children <coughs> that is gender neutral. What's it called again? It's some, some, some Saluni or something. I don't know. I can't pronounce it. I don't care. But <laughs> that's what it is. And uh, Mr. Wolf, what was your view on it? Because I asked, did you actually look at... Because just looking at it, all the reports are saying she's got this gender neutral stuff for clothes and uh, it's removing the gender from children's clothing and it's sordid. It's, it's, a, a video was sent around to the group saying it was devilish or, or demon. Satan. Or what was it? Sa- satanic. Sa- satanic uh, advert and satanic clothes and whatnot. And then uh, I actually, you know, when I looked at the clothes today, I went to the website. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I want to know, did you actually look at the website or did you just... I watched the video. I looked at the website and her Instagram account. Um, the video that I sent to the group and various groups, obviously depending on... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course you did. <laughs> yes, yes. And in some groups, there was Look good the conversation. I took it to put my own And there was duty. good um, 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 feedback from it. Um, the video spoke a lot about um, satanic uh, uh, angles to it. Now, depending on what you believe and who you uh w- what your faith is that's another story entirely but i think the underlying uh, uh uh base current of the conversation is to me it kind of makes sense there's a lot of one eye business going on there and and the whole i and in the video it's there was even a touch of pedophilia in it and that's why i wanted you guys to Mm-mm. exactly that's where, why I wanted, where 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 in the video, I can't remember what. It's only a, what a, a, the video must be. It's it's based on the advert. They're talking about an advert for this clothing line. No, the video is about ten minutes long. Yeah, but but where's the pedophilia in the advert? Because they're talking no, about an advert in the video, not the specific advert itself. Yeah, but you can't just make pedophilia and toss it on. Something. <laughs> yeah, they, she's put out a clothing line, Bro, and she's put out. The person a, has done their research on the actual clothing line. They've looked at um, some of the. Uh, um, uh, advertising material and the way that they've advertised the uh, product line and there are some kind of photographs that you look at that are a bit quite touching you you know you look at it and you think boy i'm not sure about this photograph here. Could, could you tell me what's in the photograph i haven't seen it explain it to me um if memory serves me correctly one of the pictures had a a lot of it had uh young girls in kind of like adult type swimwear and another one had uh, girls with big hands, hand printed hands on them. So, okay. so imagine like a hand print. So there's two hand prints that are on the front and then one on the back, you know. And then uh, there was also a couple of, you know, this whole um, eye, the one eye business. Oh, okay. there, right. was, there was quite a lot of that going on. So they really deconstructed the clothing itself, not just the advert. Because the, the first clothing, the advert, the whole lot, the whole, the whole gender shipping. neutral business, the whole idea of her, um, Celine Dion saying that, you know, the kids need to make their own choice as to what they are and what they believe they are and things like that. And I, and I don't co-sign that. I think that kids do need guidance. And if that's what they want to do, fine. But I don't co-sign Okay. You see, when you say like children need guidance, mm-hmm. um, when you say guidance, do you mean guidance in helping them to find out who they are or guidance in you telling them what you think is right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a bit of both. A bit of both. Um, I don't think that you should just leave kids to just do what they want, say what they say, think what they think, especially with the society that we live in, because um, the influences around them, I don't think are for the betterment of our kids and our community. I think, uh, you know, I think that the best form of influence from my perspective comes from sane and normal parents. And I say that in inverted commas. Did you say sane and normal parents? Yeah. You and really I, and, are getting and, and old, boy. And I say that in inverted commas because to one person, someone who is sane uh, believes it is right to do one thing and whereas another person thinks it's a bit wild and crazy. So... You know, I know the people that are in my circle and I see how they parent their kids. And in my circle? In my circle. And I think, you know, just based on the people that I know and my family and, uh, you know, there are some parents that are doing, in my opinion, saying the normal things. You know, allowing a kid to say that, you know, you know, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl. Uh, I'm thinking that. Nah. Come on. Now, touching on that. Stop some, being silly. Somebody at my workplace told me that his daughter goes to a girl's school. And they've got um, 
a uh, well, suppose, suppose I don't know. If, I don't know what to call them because I don't know if they've had the operation. But basically, a boy that says he's a girl in all girls' school. In all girls' school. Wow. And how old is the child? Oh my God, about eight. eight. It's like um, you know, wow. some sometimes they there are some parenting techniques that just allow your child to think freely and to do freely and. And that's all well and good, but um, I think that there are some, uh, I think there's some um, limitations to that or some issues that can arise from that. I don't know whether or not, I didn't ask any more questions whether or not they asked them if they was okay with it or if that even a question that they're allowed to ask the other parents whether or not they're okay with it. But obviously the child is there. Um, wasn't there some other thing in the news the other day about some people that didn't want their children to have sexual education? Yeah, about, I'm just trying to find the thing about now. About that as well. I don't know. So what do you man think about um, gender neutral clothing uh, oh. for children and even for, and even for adults? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because as well, like I said, it's just, if you were, they've had color neutral clothes already for children. Like you, that's, with, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what, because remember before it used to be pink was for girls, yellow was for girls. And now that this pink is for everyone, blue is for everyone, skirts, white is for skirts everyone. Skirts and all these kind of I things. don't know, but that, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't looked at it. I didn't care enough to look at it, so I didn't know. I, nobody honest. really gives a shit. Really, I, w- so I, I, I went there just to just to look quickly, and uh, I guess I didn't delve into it too much. Then maybe maybe because I, I didn't see handprints on the website, I didn't see I didn't see skirts for boys. I guess either. I just I just saw for me it just looked black and white. Yeah, just, every, you everything you was black give and it white. Much credence. That's why. And I thought because um, just watch the thing. Sometimes it's, uh, it is I, of I, interest. Yeah. I, okay. I was busy at the time, and then I, I never got back to it. I, I apologize. For me, if it's of interest, that means I have to be interested in the situation for me. To, or sorry, the subject for me to watch it. If I'm not yeah, interested, no, I'm not interested in the subject to, to watch it. Talk about it, innit? Yeah, but I didn't know we was going to talk about it until now. I, did, I haven't looked at any of the list. But okay. okay. So, uh, so here's the funny thing, right? Um, the Church of Satan or the Satanist Church have recently, um set to Church of Satan yeah yeah. they've recently set to sue Netflix oh wow Um, yes because Netflix um, had a show something Sabrina what's it called Sabrina Sabrina and Teenage Teenage Witch no not that one it's It's just called Sabrina it's Sabrina and Teenage Witch oh yeah that's not what it's called no it's just called Sabrina yeah that's the modern day version of the old one it's Sabrina and Teenage Witch but it's actually not just called Sabrina anyway go on it's called something. It's called something. It's called Sabrina, isn't it? It's, it's got the something something world of Sabrina. Sabrina, yeah. Oh, the dark it. dark world of Sabrina. Okay, so then, so yeah, so that show, yeah. So in that show, they um, Netflix up, had um, captured images of um, a, sta- a statue of Baphomet, mm-hmm. and the statue was specially commissioned by the Satan Church. Mm-hmm. Didn't get permission. Uh, Netflix didn't get permission from them to show that, and they're out here. Um, extorting money out of Netflix for it, wow! Which I thought was just quite quite amazing. Well, they are saying this, yeah, but they're at a point now where they're getting taken seriously enough to even like once upon a time they would have been like, yeah, whatever, shut up. They wouldn't have been a thing, but now they're out here taking them to court, getting monies and shit mm. for a statue. But well, it is what it is. Man. It is what it is. It, they, they, that's their their. Well, that's what they pray to, isn't it? That's their thing. But they specifically copied the specific image. No, the spe- that, specific yeah. image, and and yeah. because it's only one of them like made the children underneath and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they wow. for for those of you, it looks like a like a sheep head or ram's head, ram's head with a human body or something, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, it's half yeah. and half. Thing. Mm. Some some. But then is it got ram's legs or something as well? I can't remember. It's usually at the the It's got, got hoof. Yeah. So it's like a setador, which is like half horse, half human. Baphomet isn't actually Satan. But that's what they used to. Do. But when it did play, it, it does this like mean. this hand yeah, thing, gesture, like, yeah. like it's a Hindu type business. Yeah. But that's how they depict Satan, though. When they usually do it, they put uh, like a animal head on the thing and the whole thing. I don't know what it actually represents, but it's there. They use it in that Sabrina program, and yeah, they they, they want to sue the, sue the clap, sue them clap, bro. But who knows? Um, touching on the thing from earlier on, which uh, somebody brought up, uh, a Christian parent has threatened her child's school with legal action. Oh, yeah, that, After yeah. it organized a pride parade, which she claimed promoted LGBT lifestyles. Uh, this primary school in London held a parade earlier this year in which it encouraged children to celebrate what makes them proud of themselves and their family. Uh, the primary school was forced to cancel family invites after a group of parents threatened to stage a protest. <laughs> we coming down there. And uh, the, the, uh, p- the parent that um, uh, was not happy was a Nigerian. And she said that the event went against our Christian beliefs and was indoctrin- 
indoctrination. Yeah, but this is what I find weird. Like, as and a uh, Christian concern, sorry, a conservative group is supporting her as she considers legal action. This is what I find weird. So this Christian woman is outraged that they're considering that this pride thing is going to be an indoctrination, but she's indoctrinated her child with her own Christianity. Yeah, but you, you, but that's her child, isn't it? Yeah, you, and you wouldn't see it like that. It's weird. I just think, personally, I think it comes down to choice at the end of the day, isn't it? You have to give the parent, and this is not the first time that we spoke about something relating to this, uh, sexual education, educating kids um, with um, uh, LGBT values and things like that. You have to give the parents the choice whether they want their child to be involved in that or not. Especially at that age. This is primary school. These kids are not 11 going on to 15. This is primary school level. You can't just say we're doing it and then the kid must be there. No, you have to give people a choice to say whether they're going to be involved in that or not. I was going to fling that people could then, if you're, if you're saying this, this is something we talk about often or we've brought up a few times, yeah, people yeah. could start saying that, you know, this is a homophobic podcast. But then once you brought up the age thing, I said, nah, if anyone mentions that with primary school children, then yeah, then they're just trying to traffic it, man. Because uh, like, like we said, we don't want any, we don't want sex stuff being mentioned to primary school children. Full stop. Okay. It doesn't matter me, what. Like a lot of primary school kids to just be primary school okay. kids. Let me ask you a question then. So primary school kids, yes, Timmy and Tope, mm-hmm. our friends, Tope, yes. yeah, white and black, uh, don't really understand race yet. Timmy is white. Yeah, yeah Timmy's white. Right. Timothy, no, no Tope is white. Tope is yeah, white. It could be Timmy, no, isn't no, it? not Timmy Tope. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Tim, <laughs> white Timmy and Tope. Tope. Yeah, white Timmy and black Tope. Yeah, they they play together, hold hands. All right, don't know nothing about race really until they start doing uh, race racial uh, history things. All right, in primary school, and then they notice the the race stuff a bit more. What do you think about that then? Yeah. What age do you think that you need to understand about the racial prejudices? I don't that come? think you need to know that in primary school either. Uh, do you need to do learn history in primary school? This is up, up to ten. Who should learn history in primary school? Do you? What did, do they even have lessons like that in primary school? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's I been know. a long time since you've been to school. It's I don't, been I don't, a long time. I, I think you should teach older history than maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to be teaching my 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 not older eight year old about segregation. Yeah, before before all of that stuff, innit? Just teach her about the, yesterday, the Moors, and um, <laughs> yesterday. I don't know. which is an older history. Then, you know, happened yesterday, the, boy. The, the Crusades before before all of that before all of that bad stuff. Happened. Oh, <laughs> talking about Crusades. <laughs> what talking about Crusades? Have you been? Oh, I think it's part of the docket. Yeah, the man that went to go over to go to that island to try to um, Christianize the people that kill him dead. Let's, yeah, let's touch on that. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> laugh so hard. There's two things I laughed at this week about that I should have laughed at, but I did. I don't care. That man getting killed and that video of a, of a crocodile. That what? Uh, there's a video that we caught. Oh, that video of the crocodile. There's a video the that we that I watched today. I um, mean, this week, sorry, of a, a, a basically it's a small dog, terrier dog, chasing a crocodile, and it, and a crocodile always runs away. So the people it was a joke to keep making the terror dog chase the crocodile until one day the crocodile said yeah yeah bitch you and just bit his head off he said one day you know like it wasn't within a two minute span that all of this happened no but it's no, separate no, days it was, separate it was, days there were separate videos innit? it separate there days three separate videos hold on are you trying to tell me this happened on different days yes, yes. they kept going back to the crocodile to yes. jump the crocodile yes <laughs> bruv <laughs> and the crocodile you bitch you <laughs> the crocodile bit the, the, the thing's head and just dragged it into the water I thought it was but the same it, thing it, it wasn't the fact that they killed the dog it's the fact that the people in the back were going no <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> then have you man seen, like, seen yes. the video of the um, the couple that are letting the squ- trying to put a squirrel back up a tree they, 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 they've obviously helped the squirrel you know, who was injured and then they're trying to yeah. put it up in the tree and then before you know it, a cat just comes and <laughs> takes it away. And <laughs> and <laughs> like, no, no, no. <laughs> Why fox in there? The evolution animals, of life. <laughs> but Bro, yeah. trust me. Okay, right. what was I saying about that? An American man has been killed by an endangered tribe in the Indians Amdaman and Nokerba Islands. Butchered that, sorry. So a fisherman who took the man to North Sentinel Island say uh, tribes people shot him with arrows and left his body on the beach. Uh, he's a 27-year-old uh, Christian evangelist that wanted to go there to uh, 
evangelize the natives of this island who are completely secluded from the rest of India. Is that really what he wanted to do? Yeah. He that's wanted to go said. to take the Bible and just kind of convert them. That's really? what that's, yeah. that's what and the, Africa that's, should this is should this is why attention. you're this is why you're a Christian because they did this. Bro, they just did it me, they, they just did it with a bit one more one day, one day, mate. One day. But, but it's just but the it's truth. Right. Even even it is the Bible was long long before the white man came to bring it there. Yeah, but the version that you're into now is the version that the white man bought there. I am not part of any of that that is, is the it, constantine is it, is it version of christianity and no i am not okay so well, be, before, i've said be, that before and i will say it again i, I don't know what, constantine okay. i know you don't know what that is but it's all good continue oh, all right. sorry um, shade. <laughs> shadow <laughs> so yeah what your do you think? god is not my god <laughs> Um, My God is the God of Hellfire. <laughs> I'm kind of forgot. So the man got shot down. So the man went to the indigenous island. But no, I I just thought that he went there for something else. That's why I was asking. Oh, he went there for that and for tea, for tobacco. He was representing you and your people. No, but you get a lot of you know you get a lot of of these adventurers going to different islands. He's also an adventurer, but he's a Christian adventurer. Okay, I went to go. So he went to try to convert them into Christianity. Yeah, or to teach them. I didn't know that. And so they it, shot him dead. So here's the problem. The problem we'll is see. the island has um, certain protections against it. Yes. Yeah. I he think, was warned, didn't it? I think, yeah, yeah. well, it's your, no outsiders are allowed to go yeah, there. You're not period. Allowed. Yeah. And not anybody who carries outsiders there that have committed a crime. My man still push himself up there. Yeah. I am not an yeah. outsider. Yeah. I am a man of the world. I am the man of the Lord. The Indian... Um, government has given that place like spe- special sanctions nobody can go there that's their only little place it's untouched by humanity outside of that place and so they, they have no seeing as we were talking about this a few weeks ago we, they have no immunization to all the diseases that, out, that outside people have so, so they were they, protecting they, they, themselves that's the thing they could go there and bring their, their, their tutus chicken pox or whatever that the person has inside and just wipe them all out yeah so they're allowed to defend themselves for that reason as well I'm was, not going to say that I'm glad that the man is dead but if if you've been warned, number one, it's and, serving and then, bomber clout, right? Well, this is the thing, isn't it? You know, you don't look if like one we, of us to me. If we had done something similar like that, you know, when the white man came to our shores, then then you wouldn't be a Christian. Then right maybe, <laughs> well, there you go, Gaza. Well, the, the, once again, the thing the thing about this though, yeah, the, the word thing, was there long before the white man the thing, came. The thing about this, don't whole believe situation the white man. Is I was reading, I was, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because I, because I, that's what they tell you, isn't it? That we I, bought the Bible I was, and you believe it. But anyway, okay. I don't think that's what we believe. Mm, it's okay. Go. I, on. I think the whippings and whatever. Was what we Why do we find? <laughs> yeah, the but, um, there. Now do you believe? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the thing about these particular people that I was I was reading about them that made me um, maybe intrigued about them is that they apparently they forgot how to make I'm fire. Not sure what difference that makes, but. they forgot how to make fire. So they, what they do is they constantly keep a fire burning. Because these, these people, yeah, because they forgot how to make it. That's Bruh. what they say. They forgot how to make fire, so they constantly keep a fire burning. And when the tsunami happened, they said they all of them climbed the trees as high as the trees as possible to not be hit by the tsunami, and they carried the fire with them. <laughs> so I don't even know what that means. <laughs> there must be one bread that's holding a, a I'll, be torch. On, I'll be honest with you. I think that's bullshit. I don't know. And I, think, pr- I think it's good to say that because now we can say, "Oh, look, these people are uncivilized." No, but nothing apparently, to go what, what they did as well is the Indian government when when the tsunami happened, to check on them, they put a helicopter on the roof. I mean, sorry, the roof, you know, helicopter to fly around the island, mm. and they tried to shoot down the helicopter as well. Yeah, this was because these, these same people. These same people. So this, this, when, they, when, they, when they saw that they tried to attack them, they went back saying, "Okay, they're okay because they're trying to attack us." Mm. As normal. These, so people, like, these people are built for war. They were. They, they, I, listen, listen they, 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 apparently they came from Africa, and um, they um, migrated over to whatever part of Asia. And the rest of the people, the rest of the Africans that that migrated to Asia went other places, but they just stayed there. So they're Africans. So the last thing they did see was the white man come and cause them grief. So that's why they said, "Fuck off." Why don't you just why, why don't <laughs> why don't you why don't you just go just you, go you go you Africans bruv you go no I'm well, so, so Africans don't have an Indian accent <laughs> that, no. that they were the Indian accent so uh, for me I was like before the word came to them yeah That's one right. I was happy that God there is actually places, fuck. There's places on the earth and and cultures that I've been untouched. I like that. There's a few though. There's not. That's not I know, the ones. but you, when you hear about them, it mm. makes me feel good because it means that they haven't become extinct. You know, like make that. You feel good. It makes me feel good <laughs> on it. Make me feel good. So yeah, it, like, they haven't been. Absolutely. They haven't become in, extinct. And I like the idea that the modernized world that we live in, that we take for granted, isn't 
prevalent everywhere. There are people that have shunned it quite deliberately and they're quite happily living their lives. And I like that. I, I like gar- that. I guarantee you there's a Nigerian and a Chinese there somewhere. <laughs> and one Jew. There's, there's a Jew there as well. Holding and the a, money. And a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing is, you don't know what you, you're missing if you don't have it. Yes, that is the truth. So they're happy in their own little world. They're it? okay without Wi Fi, man. Well, yeah. they must know that something's out there because they see helicopters. And yeah, but, planes but, but, or yeah, but you don't, but you don't, it's like you've never experienced it. You don't need it. They they had these kind of tribes. Um, well, they've got these tribes in Africa. They got them in Brazil, South London, you know, in South London as well, in Peckham. There's you nothing know. untouched but in Peckham. Boy. It's true. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's been touched. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, like the simple Simon said, the mere fact that there are untouched tribes, it kind of gives you hope that 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 you know. You that, I don't know, man. It just makes you think that maybe there's a little speck of light. In the background, it gives you hope that society can be saved. You know what? Somehow. Are those tribes people like, um, like they, I said, they can teach us a few things. Like right? I said, they, they, you know, they, they don't know what they don't have and they're happy in their own realm. Are they like the, the 15 year old boy that says he will never go down on a woman? <laughs> Flip it, Nick. That Ooh. is so random. That is. Ooh, if you're Jamaican, you don't Yo, have to be 15, you could be 35. Be <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I still claim it. I mean, I, you say uh, wait, wait, wait. Give me a two lyric. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now sorry. one lyric. Okay, okay. Sorry, six, say six, seven, year seventeen, old boy. Uh, eighteen year old. 18. Whatever. Then sorry, above above the limit. Sorry, I have to worry about these things. Mm. Um, yeah, because once you do it and you see, and that woman's leg tenses up and has as a spasm, you you, don't, you know you now you're on the promised land. Well, it's it's saying the same girl Sizzler as well. Saying they've been doing it from time. Sorry, Sizzler says we still say it now. I thought you wouldn't do it. Real bad man, never, 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 Simple. Yeah. Can you imagine if you come into your house and talk? No, sorry, okay. No, 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 Can you imagine that you're, you're, you're having, you know, you meet a woman, <laughs> you know, you take her out for dinner, you romance her, you get to the moment, you're having sexual intercourse with the woman, and then she just says, is that Capleton, isn't it? No, it's that's, a, that's still Sizzler, though. It's Sizzler, yeah. And he goes, Mr. Sizzler, you know, you know, she starts trying to put his head down there. She's like, wait, 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 I do. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Sisla, I would just like, you know, a little bit of fellatio. <laughs> and then he just jump on says, no, no, no. Man, I start singing at you. No, no, no. I would, bro, I would scream. <laughs> if I was here, I would just run out of the house. <laughs> but what? He's like, why is he so aggressive about it? I don't know, bruv. Why, some some people. What is it about their music that they have to tell you that they don't like gay people and they have to tell you they're, they're not going to do anything down there with involving their tongue or your backside? The underneath. You have to remember that in a funny kind of way, the culture is very um, Christian orientated. Mm. So all of those doctrines come from the, the, the field of Christianity that has been exposed in Jamaica. Again, yeah, depending we, on which Bible you're reading from. And but that's what I'm saying. The, the, in Jamaica, that's the Christianity. Like these things are wrong. Is there a b- Bible of Licky Licky or something? I don't know about. It. <laughs> but the thing that made me laugh is that yes, I agree. I agree. You know, it's a very Christian in their ways of dealing with things. But the rest of the song is is chatting about and I serve her well. <laughs> so he's talking about banging the girl like around the whole of the song, but he's refusing that one thing. He <laughs> not that pussy. That's like DJ Khaled, is it? Simple Simon. <laughs> <laughs> As our, as, shit. as our resident um, Jamaican Car- Caribbean um, <laughs> I'm a, the Caribbean co- correspondent half Carib yes. half Carib Car- yeah. <laughs> and now a word from our Caribbean correspondent this is what I was going to say before I've, I came uh, from another podcast uh, I, I hold myself and I was on the Word to Your Mother podcast uh-huh. so I've come from there to big up jukebox with their uh, fire alarm that went off right in the middle of the podcast oh, stop stepping out on us <clears throat> um, so that will He's be done that a couple that, times don't tell him that, that will be released I forgot you know that man. will be released like today or tomorrow whenever it's, as this comes out whore. But you're a podcast whore man whore yeah. Yeah. I'm nowhere near like certain people certain whores but um, the, the we were talking about culturally so the podcast is about uh, children mm-hmm. and parenthood mm. right so um, me just wanted to talk about my kids all the time I was happy to jump on there and, and talk about stuff but it it, it it branched out and one of the things we were talking about was the difference between African style of parenting and Caribbean style of parenting yeah and um, 
Both of them are half Jamaican and they have uh, two other uh, Caribbean halves. Sorry, I can't remember what, what they are, but they're both half Jamaican. And so they both, both their fathers are Jamaican. So they spoke on that. And they kind of, I, I, let's put it this way, without going too deep into it, listen to it yourself. I wanted to defend Jamaica Mm-hmm. And I couldn't because I don't know enough about this specific subject. Okay, uh, okay, okay. So I was like, I'm going to have to speak to Simple Simon. Yeah. And so I'm going to ask you now. So what they said was basically they don't have they didn't their parents didn't pass on any culture to them. There was no culture passed down. So I was so they said outside of food and music, there was no culture. So I brought up our language, food, music, uh, clothes, certain traditions, and all this and that. But when they said it, I because they didn't say it in the nicest way. I wanted to, to, to defend it. I said, no, there must be stuff. And they said, no. And then because I don't know anymore, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't add to it. I couldn't defend it. Spoke about this in a barbershop okay. just this week. But anyway. Okay, so can people that defend it, defend it, defend it here for me. So, it's, so here's the thing, right? So with um, Jamaican culture and even the, the Jamaican population, there is a, um, a large contingent that are from town, what you would call the metropole. And as a result of that, they have very westernized points of view and stuff like that. Mm. Then there's the other set that are more rural from the countryside and stuff. And then you can have people that are like from the Maroon Town, for example, which is the old school um, anti-slavery rebellious blacks that weren't having it. They pass down culture. Nanny of the mar- maroons. Maroons, yeah. yeah. You've got people that live in a, a Kampong town that is basically, they speak um, Akan, which is a... a, a f- it's Ghana. Yeah, because that that's a Ghanaian thing you just yeah, said. I was that, just about to that's say that. That's where Nanny of the Maroons is from? Around that area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have them and they pass the culture on. They speak one of the Ga- Ga- um, Ghanaian... Well, what is it? Is it not Ghanaian culture that they're passing down? N- in its own way of form. But it's now... I want to use the word bastardized, but changed. Um. It, yes, you're right in that sense. But what I'm saying is that they've continued that. Mm. The point I'm making here is with modernization, the people that are in town have less of a connection to their roots, if that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. So, yes. yeah, and I think that I think that doesn't just lie with just in Jamaica either. I think that's a lot of countries right down to us. Yes, but what I'm explaining is is mm. the reason why. Um, somebody may say that they don't have like a, a cultural thing in a Jamaican household. Mm. I would say that there are things that are, how do I put it? Maybe in an African household, the origin of your culture is known and is taught to you. In a Jamaican household, the origin of your culture isn't known necessarily and you learn practices rather than understanding that this is part of culture. So for example, Saturday soup, cleaning the house on a certain day of the week, only eating fish on Fridays. These are all things that are passed down to you in, how do I put it, in practice, but there isn't a a um, a massive dialect around it to say, yeah, you know, this is why we do this on Friday. This is why we do this on Saturday. But most Caribbean people will be able to have that shared experience. You talk about Saturday soup and a whole bunch of Caribbean people, people will be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Now, do you know what Saturday soup is? <clears throat> That's when you take this, the, the stuff from Monday to Friday, you mix it together and you make a soup on Saturday. Is it? <laughs> it's probably where it, it come from. No, no. Saturday soup is it's hard. It's hard. Hard, hard, hard food, food yeah, and hard, you know, provisions yeah. and all them thing there. Yeah, they but, bring that to me. One but they'll make it on Saturday. Friday, typically they don't eat meat, fish, so like yeah. that. It's for Fish Friday, and that's all over the Caribbean. That's Jamaica, mm. Saint Lucia, Barbados, all of them. So you have that, and these are things that are staples and practices that I know of, but nobody in the family has ever said this is why we do it. it mm. It's mad because. I think a lot of girls that I know that are half, in fact, there's boys and girls, but it's girls I know most of the time I spoke to that's half Jamaican, half something else. That other half always kind of looks down on the Jamaican side still. And it's usually because the dad's Jamaican as well and the parent, the other parents from the other half. And they, they as a culture, look down on Jamaicans. Same with that, a lot of the African countries look down on Nigeria. Same thing for Jamaica. So people just look at it as the because it's the, it's the hub in it where people and so, no one understand they look down on it so the thing is that the, 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 the biggest misconception is about um, probably Jamaicans attitude towards education yeah because he spoke on that so <clears throat> the misconception is that Jamaicans don't care about education <laughs> to the same level compared to um, our African counterparts or African brothers or whatever you want to call it the problem is one second hold it you're going to have to listen to this Word to your mother podcast because we it's 
speak specifically on that. And I'm sure it's going to be the exact opposite of what you're going to say. The problem mm-hmm. is, people see the popular culture of Jamaica and get caught up in that. So they see dancehall, they see all the rest of it, and they think that there's no underlying. I can tell you now from my own family that there are members of my family that had a hard time because it was education, 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 education. They've gone to the best university in, in Jamaica. You, you don't, they don't, they're not allowed to speak to anybody who hasn't got a certain level of education. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So I find it interesting when people say, oh yeah, you know, you don't care about whatever, whatever, whatever. And that's only because of the experience that they've had with Jamaican people that are in the UK. Yes. I know a couple, sorry. Um, I know a couple of, of my friends, uh, that were born and brought up in Jamaica and came here when they were about 13, 14. Yeah. And they were from the rural area. Yeah. And they all they always speak about how far advanced they were. Yes. When they came here, they didn't realise how smart they were compared to the rest of the British children that they were with. Uh, and this so, is a big thing. Uh, I can understand the you know, the overall aspect of Africans' um, approach to education. But I'm not sure that I co-sign the idea that uh, uh, the the Jamaicans over there may not be as educated. I'm not sure if that is the approach that they were saying. But, but maybe the attitude, the maybe the attitude to education overall may be more fundamental to African parents, but they're just as smart. I think that with regards to... Because even before... The, um, you had the Filipinos and the, uh, the Africans and such nurses here. A lot of them used to be Caribbean. Yeah. And so obviously they have to be educated to a certain level to do that role. All of things. That whole wind rush. Yeah, yeah was, most of them was educated, was educated That's the whole reason. That's why they brought them in the yeah. first place. Yeah. So it's not a case that they're not educated in that country. It's a case that what is um, promoted is not education. What is promoted is people flinging themselves from the speaker onto the pum pum. And that is what they want to show around the world. What they want to show around the world is dance. What but, they want to show around yeah, the world. You're talking about outside. Um, yeah, but uh, outside but influences. These people, they're, yeah, yeah, but even. They're talking you, about their, but, this is the thing, but this is the thing. Even if they promote it outside, if that's what people are looking for you for, and that's what your people are making money for, then you're going to go for what's making you money and it's not necessarily going to be education. If you're making money because you're a dance artist and that's your 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 main export as well as tourism or whatever, then you're going to try and go into those particular things because that's what you see making you money. If man that's going to school ends up still coming out of school with a, a degree and he still ends up being, I don't know, working in the hotels because I, I guarantee a lot of the people that's working in the hotels and all the, the, the tourist industries are very, very educated people but they can't really find the necessary getting the jobs with a good salary that they'll be able to work for their particular fields over there then they're going to go and do whatever thing they're going to get their money in it. It's o- just where it goes everywhere. Ulti- I- ultimately, the society in Jamaica is very split. So the the less economically endowed people are the people that are typically known to be into dancehall yeah so the idea that if you're into dancehall or what have you in jamaica you are somebody will already make a a, a, a calculation about your social standing you got like you got a very um it's like an elitist culture still in jamaica yes, isn't it? very, very much. classism very so much. Like, was like <laughs> like i'll tell you a story about my um my brother-in-law he's told us about he's uh one of the pastors that was in jamaica when he was in jamaica mm. uh, apparently he fired his his uh maid because she was playing reggae music yeah. He fired her, you know? Yeah. Not because she did anything wrong. Not because she stole money. Because she played reggae music in his house as the pastor. Let me give she you fired him. Let me give you a big irony, yeah? So the world, as far as they're concerned, Jamaica, first thing that comes to your mind is Bob Marley. Second thing that comes to your mind is Ganja Weed, yeah? In Jamaica, ganja burn, ganja in Jamaica burn. itself, those things were all very much taboo for a long time. Rastaf- well, Rast- Rastafarians, Rastafarians well. were were persecuted. They were beaten by police in particular. Like it was, you were, as far as the societal breakdown went, I think Rastafarians were the last. So you had poor people <laughs> and then Rastafarians. That, you know, so I was 18. The Rastafarians used to live in the hills as well. And Rastafarians went up to live in the hills because of this. Like mm. you couldn't do anything around town. Oh, we don't want you around here. You can't get any work. We're not, we're not employing you. Well, F y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to England. So, well, so, mate. Go, oh, get out of here. Shoo, shoo. So, so, shoo. Come here, mate. so you've got a fractured society like that. So the fact that dancehall is exported the way it is exported and the way that it's um, so prevalent around, uh, and prominent around the world is a testament to 
a social, socially and economically deprived sector of society managing to broadcast themselves around the world. What, what I will say is just to touch on the culture aspect a little bit more is um, obviously African people have a lot of cultural practices that I know that some of my Jamaican friends are envious of. And I would ask the question, um, do you think that that is down to the fact that uh, we all have our own dialect and they don't? They do though. Patois is is, a, is, a, is an exclusive language. It's actually reg- it's actually recognised by by the government. Like it's it's an exclusive Can language. Can you go and learn the Patois dialect? Yes. Okay. But 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 do you think that um the okay they have the Patois dialect, which is uh, almost like a broken English thing. It's yeah. That's exactly what it is. You get me. To so a degree, it, yeah. It mixed with uh, French Creole and all of that stuff. Not it? so much in Jamaica, but go on, yeah. But but don't you think that that we have our conch, you know, languages, which you know has a rich history, have a uh, impact on how much of a culture that we have compared to maybe Jamaica. Yeah, but then you have and, to understand... And, uh, and some of the other Caribbean islands. I hear what you're saying, but you've got to take into account what Jamaica is. Yeah. So it's a it's a construct, effectively, of 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 displaced peoples. So it's not just the Ghanaian people that were there. There's Igbo people there as well. But when you don't have the link back home for a long time and you have to now create your own identity... It's America. Effectively, yeah. But this is the thing, because in Brazil, you have your people that were taken over there from Africa, because like you said, Jamaica and, 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 most, and the Caribbeans were taken from Africa. The, the black people weren't there before, or maybe there were very few. So the majority of them came from Africa and they were put there. And like you said, ties were severed. They had to either, um, I don't know, make their own traditions or some of the ones that were there before got changed and mutated or whatever. But the ones in Brazil, they stick... It's like if we go to those tribes that came from Africa to the Brazil around the same time, it's still the same thing. They still some speak. of them, but there's still how many other Brazilian black Brazilians that probably have that? Um, yeah, but supposed to have that link. I don't understand it. Yeah, but the culture's like there. It's not like it's. it's where's, yeah, where's, I don't know. What it's, the co- the, co- what the culture's thinking. in one area in Salvador, so there's a there's a concentration of the culture no, over there. But I mean, it's there. Yeah, I, that's why I was trying. But to, you also like I said to... when I was at this thing, I was trying to argue there must be some somewhere like that. In these islands, where, are, where it's not, it ain't got nowhere. There is, it's there is, there. there is. If if you go to like the places I mentioned, like Kumpung Town and down in 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 Jamaica, that they speak exclusively when you say, when you like say these a islands, Ghanaian dialect. Yes, Caribbean islands. Well, Haiti to the point, to the point where no, where they not, speak, where not they speak Haiti. Creole. No, but Haiti's got a the, Haiti has a, a rich history of, no, of no, no, no. So the, the spirituality not. thing. So, but so back to the point that you're making now, with regards to Jamaica, that place does exist there. And it's so, so a, there's a, a tribe in Jam- there's an area in Jamaica where they speak ex- an exclusive African dialect. They, yeah, they they are speaking a, a can and even they they are watching a documentary about it the other day. They they took um one of the people from there, or no, brought one of the people from Ghana to there, or them to Ghana, and the man conversed with him, and he was like, it, you know, this guy's never left Jamaica before, mm. and he's conversing with him in his native tongue in terms that are the old, old school. So he knows that he knows of, the language. Of talking. Yeah, he knows that he knows, that he knows, he's seen the video, yeah? Mm. He knows that he knows the language. He knows Jamaica though. So this is why when I'm in Ghana, we see Jamaicans. Like. You will see Jamaicans in Ghana all the time because that, that link is their promised land. That, is that link has yeah. been kept. Igbo people are not so... Is that down to Rollins? Was it Rollins that told them, come home? Uh, whoever was there, was a, Wellings, yeah. there was a part, yeah, there was a period. Where was in Marcus Garvey going? Marcus Bar- Garvey was talking Africa in general. Okay, because I thought he was more linked to Ghana, maybe because he had that black star. Yeah, but, yeah, nah, the black star line and thing. But he was just Africa in general. So that link is still there. It's just not as the numbers are not as high and it's not as prominent. It's it's like you, all other things in in okay. you, you know what? Culture. Yeah, you know because we've t- spoke about Jamaica on this podcast, and I, I don't know what they said on the podcast that you're saying there. But there's two very, very small places that you need to show a lot of respect to you for what they've managed to do and achieve. Why the name is Britain, as much as you hate what they've done, for the, for such a small little place, the way the amount of places they took over the world is madness. All right. Madness. And Jamaica. Jamaica is the biggest popular culture influencer ever. Yep. And it's just a small island. 
That small island, what? Popular culture, it is massive. Three point something million. And yeah. and people don't That's necessarily the of people don't Western necessarily half of London show as much respect to that because that that country there than it should do. It it has influenced almost every aspect of of black music anyway, yeah. in one shape or form. Yeah, yeah. Over history, sound yeah. systems, yeah. Bare things and people need to. Well, in London, the, the, there was at one point the London language was just bits of of of, of patois that we was just throwing in there every so often. It was massive. That again, we were talking in a bar. Yeah, and I don't just, think that, pe- that I don't think people take the time to show the, as much respect as they should do for their what they've achieved as such a small nation. So, I'll, so I'm going to go as far as to say the culture of Jamaica in particular is very very complicated. It's complicated in the sense that we don't have many in the way of griots that are custodians of the culture who are able to lay it out in front of you and say this can you, poem can you yes. define what a griot is please this poem yeah well it's um it's a speaking it? it's a it's a it's, it's a, a speaker, great it's a great orator yeah it's yeah. someone who's a good narrator isn't it yeah, yeah. well yeah. narrator you're reading something but orator yeah yeah so it's just talk, uh, talker okay like an obama all right so it could be stop flinging yourself off s- stereos on so we don't we don't have too many of those <laughs> to actually present the culture in a way to say we are Jamaican. This is what it is to be Jamaican. But Jamaican people understand the practices in reference because they see it. I would put, what's his name? Um, Akala. Yeah. I'd put him as a... As a He's a fantastic speaker. Uh, Mita Baruka is another one. The same one that was at this poem. Him. Listen, He's another listen, one. Listen to the song, This Poem. Or the poem, this this poem. You can go, go deaf comedy, uh, deaf deaf comedy jam, or is it deaf deaf poetry jam? Yeah, and put in this poem. But there's a house version that's that's even better because it's beautiful. It's got a house. Just two things then. One, this thing about Ghana. Just keep in mind, Ghana has an open policy for anyone that has like a that's in the diaspora that has no links to Africa. They have this policy that we will accept you as one of us. You can get a Ghanaian passport. So you African American. High and, requirement though. And, uh? There's a high requirement. <laughs> there isn't that's, that's the whole thing <laughs> nah, go on go on um, so, just... so they have, I don't know what it's called but they have this thing this policy where you can come to us basically say we want to be Ghanaian we have no um, link so it's, it's basically I think it's aimed more or less towards African Americans and then you can take that and be uh, Ghanaian and I think get a Ghanaian that, passport and everything I think that came from I, th- I believe it was Jerry Rollins when he came into power Oh, 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 I don't I, think it's that long ago. I can't remember, but all I'm saying, no, it might have been because um, uh, who else done it? Someone else did it. Uh, Haley Selassie did it with Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, he said that if you're an African, you can come home. You understand? And, mm. he, and he set what, out land to do it. And that's why what? you'll find that the Rastafarian movement has been so prominent in areas of Ethiopia. They've gone to Kenya. They've because the, these governments have said the same thing if you are children of Africa you can come back to Africa so there's a massive Rastafarian community in Ethiopia a massive one in Ghana massive one in Kenya South Africa's got a massive Rastafarian it's like I can go almost anywhere in Africa and there's a Rastafarian community that will embrace me just because and they're, and they're all thieves in every African film but um <laughs> which is wrong isn't it because <laughs> that's how they do it but question on on Haile Selassie why would you say it quickly yeah because uh, there's talk about the fact that he didn't actually like Jamaicans um, I don't know. I don't know they whether said, that's true or they not. They said that he didn't like them when he went to Jamaica. He, he like he wanted to get back on the plane immediately, a bit like when you go to Croydon and them sides there. I don't, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Mr. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know if this notion is true. It could be true. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But it's an interesting notion that these people would worship this man, and he's saying. Mm, I don't, I don't, I don't feel these people, especially. But it could be true though, because you're saying that they looked at as the 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 bottom of society or somewhere else. Yeah, the Rastafarians were for a long time. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. So Where that's we're team of a podcast. I just want to pick them up because um. I just want to pick them up. Oh. Just before we move on, I mentioned something that you say, Wahala, and I just want you to explain yourself because I didn't do it justice. Slag. Dad's being more important to a daughter than the mum. Ooh, could you just explain why and then, and then we that. just move on yeah I just want him to explain because in I, season I, one even. I couldn't even explain I don't it get in season two but go on um, why, do I, why do I say it because yeah. I think that they, for one I say it's only up to a certain age and I'm not necessarily saying they're the most important I still think the mum is the person that does the day to day situation I think to the child they're looked at as more important because they don't one people don't respect something that is constant and your mum's always constant. She's the one that's always feeding you. She's the one that's always doing that. She's the one that's always that and you take them for, um, for granted. You take them for granted. But your dad, 
he comes in the house and he's like Superman. Like he comes in from work most of the time. If we're going by one of those those job situations where the dad's working often and maybe he doesn't see the child as often. A as responsible maybe the dad as well. And he comes in and he behaves like Superman and every son wants to be like their dad because their dad's meant to be the strongest. And every daughter needs to have a feeling that they can be protected by, by someone. And as though they feel protected by their mother, they also need to feel more protected probably by their father because society makes it so. So it's not necessarily just a case of you know, a biological thing, which I still think is part of it. Society also shows you that the man is the more, you know, is the is the protector. And if you've got a father that's not there, not protecting you, when society showed you that's you be protected, you're automatically made vulnerable. So that's why I said that the father needs to be at it it has to have, you know, some form of part or role in your in your life as a child because they have to be seen as to be protecting their children. It's just it's just natural. My daddy breaks rocks. <laughs> it just is what it is, man. I, I said it a bit better in the other podcast, but that's kind of ways. Yeah, uh, if we knew the episode number, we could um, just point to how we got to that episode, but we don't know the episode. So listen to all of them. <laughs> as, as a father. All 175 mm-hmm. episodes. There's more than that, even still. There's not. 175. 175. I think there's more. What more? We had 75 <laughs> season one and 100 season two. Well, we've had like bonus episodes and blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's I'm no sorry. Th- th- we have episodes that weren't numbered, yeah. which. Yeah, I'll do. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. What are we going to talk about? Taylor Swift on her record deal. I know nothing I've, about this, so can you explain, please? Taylor Swift has been in a record contract since she was 14. And I don't know what age she is now, but she's finally out of that deal and she was negotiating a new deal. So what she's done is that she, a lot of the, well, a couple of the record labels, the major distributors have said, have shares in Spotify and they're looking to sell their shares. And what they've said is they're going to pass on some of that money to their um, artists. But what they'll do is they'll recoup funds that are owed to them before they pass on the money. So She's 28. Okay, so what, 14, 14 years? 14 years, Fuck yeah. Because um, they did it based on per album, minute. So if it's been usually five album deal, so maybe it's five albums she's done in, in those years. But anyways, what usually happens is as an artist, you go to a label, they say, yeah, we can do, do stuff with you. And then they give you an advance. And the advance, let's say, is 100K, which is a decent advance. And then, Basically, you work, you, you pay your promoter, you, you pay for this, you pay for that, clothing, promotion, this and that. And then you pay for all of that with 100 grand. You get, you know, certain things. And your company makes the money back. They take money from your shows. They take money from this. They take money from that. And that's how they make their money. What they're saying is that once we sell these our shares in Spotify, which a lot of them have done or are going to do, we will take, we will give you, I don't know, 70,000. But really, you owe us 70,000. So you get nothing. But then at least it kind of wipes the slate clean. What Taylor, um, what's her name again? Taylor, Taylor, Swift. Taylor Swift has done is that she's negotiated that you just give them the money. Like whatever they owe is, is separate to that. And this is for all artists on that label. Not just her, all artists on that label. That's what she's done. And then she gets to keep her masters, which is, it's a, it doesn't seem like a big deal necessarily in our community when we hear about Jay-Z doing it. But it's most, 99% of people don't actually own their masters. So she's owning her masters as well. So what do you think about this f- thing where, because she had this thing with Spotify before where she said, because you ain't giving us enough money, she, she came off Spotify for four years. She's only gone back on it last year when Apple Music were going to do their, um, when they first started and they were going to do their, their free trial to everybody for three months, whatever it was. They said they weren't going to p- pay the artist. And she said, okay then. She sent an open letter to Apple saying, you bastard you. And then within 24 hours, they said, sorry, Taylor, you're right. Um, we're going to pay our artist. She, and then now she's negotiated this deal for everybody on her, on sorry, the label. Not her label, the label that she signed to. Everybody on that label, she's negotiated this deal for. What do you think about her boss power moves that she's doing and, and flexing for other artists? I think, I think it dips it forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. But you know that, what? I was quite impressed with it when, yeah, I, when I, I heard it. I'm also impressed with it. And I think it's, uh, again, a lot of people need to do that type of thing. They need to, you know, they need to start... Making movements, you know, Joe Biden's always been talking. About, oh no, not Joe Biden. Sorry, um, uh, Nori's always talking about this union for for artists, and they should have a union, and you know, hip hop should have a union where you go and you have like strikes and stuff like that to try and make people do these types of things. And I think that these are the type of people that have got that type of level where they can make this type of change. Hip hop's made it a different way where they just own their own businesses and then do things their own way. But th- these guys don't have that type of well, they do have the type of business savvy, but they do it in different ways more more undercover who's these people like pop artists rather than hip hop artists okay so um they might have businesses here and there one of them might even know Spotify you won't even know but um 
I think this is a major move, man. A major move. It's something you would expect someone like Beyonce to do. It's, it's true, isn't it? I would expect Beyonce to do this. It, but Beyonce, Beyonce did her thing with the title thing when they all said, well, we're going to title and we're going to try and make title our own thing because they pay the, the artists more than anyone else. So that was her way of doing things, I suppose. But the, um, the thing about this Taylor Swift woman, yeah, like, because we don't listen to pop, I'm guessing we don't realise how big she is because I get the impression she's that massive. She's, she's massive. Yeah, she's, she's massive. She's, she's, she's only, massive. Only a massive, bro. she's, only a massive artist can command this kind of thing. In it. No, well, some most people can't go to the record label. Say this, and they'll tell you to get on your bike, mate. Taylor Swift is probably is like big. top top five I get, in rise in the world. Top one I, or I, two, I, I, even. top I, one. Yeah, okay. I get the impression that I probably heard a Taylor Swift song and not known as a Taylor Swift song, right? Maybe not because I don't know any Taylor Swift songs. I've heard. Kendrick Lamar's on one of her songs. I don't know that song. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't listen to to, to, to Taylor Swift. I know uh, one of her old songs. I, I listened to the one where there was controversy because in the music video they were booty shaking and wearing a stereotypical black clothes and so it was a well, upper or oh, she's appropriating black culture. Blah blah blah. No, so the, I think I heard that the one. The only thing I, I knew remember. about Taylor Swift was that Kanye got on the stage to interrupt her, and that just made me feel like he didn't respect her. <laughs> But she that helped her. That's one of Mentioned. that's that's a catalyst for her blowing up as well because it opened her to another market. Of course, I hear you. That's but, why he said that thing about her in the song. What did he say? I forgot now. Something basically that he made Taylor Swift kind mm, of thing. She clapped back at him as well. Taylor will clap back, you know. Yeah, this is weird. Like she just seems a bit off off kilter to me. What? Sorry, I, I don't know. Like she just seems like that that weird to me. Uh, the, what I've seen of her, she just she moves weird. She's just weird for me. Have you seen? I saw one video of her dancing to some song, and I was like, "What part of the song are you dancing to?" Because she has no rhythm. She's a white girl, isn't she? Mad. She she has to put her her bag down on the floor and dance around it. That's what they do. But I'm joking. um, Let me touch on something else. You said something about hip hop not having the ability to do this type of thing. No, that's not what I said. Um, You saying hip hop artists with the union and all that? So they should have a union to do these types of things. And I said they tend to do things differently. I said like they might just go and do like Jay Z's done, have his own own thing so instead of doing it through the, the label that they're with now they might go and do their own independent thing or do, yeah, they, do yeah, it, yeah. they do it in a different way have you seen a new um, controversy with uh, Fortnite the game and the dancer and the dancer in the game yeah because what, what's his name um, the guy that did the, two um, milli yeah the one that did the milli rocker sued them innit it was, it was in oh, really? the process of possibly doing it but they've they've basically got this in that purchase thing yeah in game purchase where you can buy the dance moves but they've all the dance moves, or most of them, are hip hop dance moves. So you've got uh, Snoop talking Do- about game, by the way. Yeah, Fortnite, uh, Blizzard, Blizzard, uh, what they call Software House. Um, you see, so you got Snoop's um, drop it like it's hot. drop it like it's hot dance. You got two millies, milli rock. You got um, that one where they kick the shooter, the shooter. Yeah, as well, the L, whatever that is. Yeah, so they've got and the, oh yeah, and the dabs as well as all the rest of it. So Fortnite has made like two billion, or no, sorry, they've made a billion, um, and they've on this current series with series five of Fortnite, and these dancers are in there, and now the hip hop community, especially the dancers, are saying, well, how do we not get our cut out Hashtag, of this part? Uh Antoine Griezmann. But the thing about the, the Millie Rock is Fortnite dance moves last two scores. The thing about the Millie Rock is that um, but they're not Fortnite dance moves. That's the point. Yeah, the, the Millie Rock is kind of at least named after the guy, so he can kind of say, "Well, it's right. my, my thing in it." Yeah, can you copyright a dance move? Well, they're saying they can't. They're saying that a choreo, um, you can copyright choreo- choreography, but you can't copyright individual moves because the individual moves are the component for the choreography. That's interesting. So if you had a whole, if they had a whole choreographed session that they had copied, then yes, there's a possible mad, argument because you can copyright like words, yeah, and very small sentences. It's it's like the Michael oh, Jackson yeah, thriller dance, isn't it? That dance. is his thing, isn't it? You get me? So why can't dance moves be choreographed? People know when someone's doing that dance move, they know. But it the thriller is dance Jackson, is a is a whole choreograph though. It's not just a one. They're saying that the Millie Rock is one move. Well, he sues somebody for that. He can't sue somebody for the one move. I'm talking about the the um the thriller the thriller dance. dance. He'd be more likely to be able to do it because it's a whole choreography. If you copied that whole choreography and made money off of it. Uh-huh. The estate is it's, there's more of an argument for it. Uh-huh. What they're saying but, but is maybe just the moonwalk by itself. Yeah, you, no, no, yeah. Okay, which it's is not his anyway. It's oh. not his. It's turbo. Shalama. Ah, it's not even Shalama. It's turbo. Oh, oh, you're talking about that old. Um, yeah. Um, you see one? Was it like a jazz sound? Jazz whatever. singer. Yeah. You done it on top of the pops as well. The jazz singer. Damn it. 
Anyway. <laughs> the, the, the moon walk goes back way before yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah, it goes back to Africa. Yeah, it goes back to Africa. Wait, the whole, the, the whole, the whole, the whole yeah, um, it's old, it's old, it's the whole original thing of the moon walk was a child being chased by their mother to give them beats, <laughs> and they ran backwards. <laughs> that is the moon walk. Welcome to the podcast, uh, the actor. Shade, bro. <laughs> Proper shade. Okay, okay. Where, okay. where you been, yo? Um. <laughs> No, yeah. that actor. Come late. Eating. Don't say no. What do you think about Black China and white, white and nations? Oh, white and nations. Black and white and nations. I know why. So, for those of you that don't know, the lovely Black China Bitch. is taking away her blackness because she has created a whitening cream. It's no. not her. And taking it, huh? No, I didn't it. <laughs> Who created it? Another company, another person. But oh, she's promoting yeah, it. She's come to promote you. So, it's. Go on. Semantics, yeah? No, but oh. she did create. It's semantics, uh, uh, but it is semantics. A, a Cameroonian pop star, but it's semantics. Created the. Um, it's not semantics. It's semantics, bro. She's taking it to Africa and trying to promote it. No, Nigeria no, she, specifically. She didn't. That's what I'm trying to say. It's all right. Make it look again. Stupid. Semantics. Wow. Calm down, bro. That's not nice. All right. Exactly. It's fucking semantics, bro. No, you want to never start another argument again I'm, and I'm then trying, have trying, people I'm, say guys I'm, don't argue. I'm trying, it's I'm, semantics. I'm trying to make sure he's saying the right it's thing. It's semantics. Doesn't matter though. It does matter. No, that, actually, that is a big part of the whole no, thing. Bro, it's, no, it it doesn't matter because it's semantics. No, if people if people want to know, it's not a big thing people can is. go and look and you, say, you, "Oh, right, it's this, this, and this." You cannot say, we're covering. We're doing a no, no, general. No, 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 we're no, generalizing no, no, the whole situation. No. Somebody, somebody, everything else somebody is semantics. Somebody to promote something, and somebody actually creating Jesus. the product. I won't mute the mic oh, this time. Two completely different things. That's like saying, which is why I said semantics. You're going around the houses of something. Just say, you know what, I got it wrong. That's what you need to say, you know. I know I'm going And wrong. I said semantics. It's okay, semantics. I think maybe... Uh, it's semantics. Uh, we can move on. Oh, okay, you keep, you keep having... I think next time, oh, let him finish, yeah. and then you can... Black China's gone to promote a whitening cream in Nigeria, aka, which is part of Africa. Is not in Africa? It's in Africa. Thank you very fucking much. Semantics. <laughs> That's not what I was arguing. That's anyway, what he was arguing. Again, I'm saying semantics. Africa, whether she created it or she's promoting it, semantics. I'm, this I'm, woman is doing this thing I'm, in this country. <laughs> I'm How's doing that? This thing. I'm quite is, delicate. Is, is, <laughs> is she doing this thing? She or did this <laughs> thing. <laughs> or this thing. She did this thing. D I S, not T H. Oh, not this poem. Man. This thing. Because you know this thing can mean this thing, not this and thing. Everything. You don't know about this thing. She's not doing I'm, this thing. I am quite um, delicate when people say, Africa when really they do mean one country in Africa and they just say yeah and in Africa they do this and, and in thinking, Europe they do this yeah like mm, no Africa big place where are you talking about a bit different from one one side to the other side if someone says Africa and, and it's one part of Africa say which part of Africa are they doing it in they could say that it, to generalize if it I can have to a make it more specific them. yeah if you can have a conversation with if them if they're just on a podcast I'm listening to and I can't actually ask them then I would have but they can I, always I, they can always look and reference it Oh, someone's did this and this, this. Let me look. Let me look it up and see exactly where. Mm-hmm. You're wrong and strong. You know that. How much? Right. Which, which is a sign of weakness. It's nothing to do with being a sign of weakness. Oh, that's right. If you look at it in any other context, if someone said this in the news and they research the news and say, "All oh, right, it's there. It's there where they did." Who this. researches the news? They go on tweets and then they live off that until somebody so the, you know what you're wrong. You know that was the bad faction. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is tweeting not a form of news now? No. I'm going to make Touché. good sex to my wife tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you say good sex, does that include fellatio? Do you know why recently? Semantic. Why recently on WhatsApp it says forward when you forward it, whereas before it didn't used to. No, because in India there was a problem of people spreading fake news where they would say, "Oh yeah, 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 um, such, such and such um, person is in this community and okay. they and they are child molester," and it would just spread like wildfire, and then they'll go and kill this person, and they'd be like, uh, "No, they were just innocent for some reason. Somebody just made up this story." So they said, "We're going to add this forward thing as a precaution to stop people just spreading this stuff, so at least people know that this wasn't something that's ne- not necessarily it's not, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's like whatever." Anyways, so that I mean. This is that kind of thing. It rolls into that field. It can be kind of dangerous just to spread things out there if we're not informed properly or if we're not given the correct information. So in this instance, yes, it's, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's a minor. It's, it's, it's not that important, yeah, really, whether which part of Africa she's in or if she created the cream or not. But seeing as we do like to you know, be real news, not fake news, let, if, if, if we are being corrected, let's allow the correction so that we give out the, the real information. Is that fair enough? That's fair enough, but I haven't said anything fake.
Maestro. I'll let, I'll, 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 let, I'll let you finish. The, the, I'll let you finish the thing. He's finished, man. Semantics anyway. No, they broke into an argument halfway through. No, I'll just continue. It's semantics. Man. You finished the thing, man. Because currently, I can't, apparently, I can't say anything. Not by me. Oh I, it, was, it was you two. I'm, I'm not I'm not victim blaming. I'm, I'm not asking for victim right. shaming. I'm just saying I can't say anything. Denicia so, is uh, the uh, founder of White and Nicious. <laughs> One hundred, baby. All right. Um, so uh, she she's uh, a Cam- Cameroonian, and uh, so this uh, white nicious cream, which we have spoken about before, was founded in 2014. Now she's reached out to American socialite Black China to come and promote her product in Nigeria. So she's been in Nigeria. She's really got into a fight with somebody who got a bit too touchy feely with her. Apparently, some dude that tried to hug her and they got into a fight. I don't know. That's all separate thing. But what do you think about promoting this this cream, or what do you think about this artist doing it, or uh, whatever? Uh, uh, you know, oh, is she not? Uh, giving her that. Sorry, I don't know. She's gonna come out of it. What, what is she? She's, she's a, a she's a social. I think she's that, a stripper hoe. But keep going. I think that <laughs> she's a stripper hoe. Stripper hoe. Her and her and her mama. She's oh, a bitch for, for real. God. She's her a mama bitch. called Tokyo. She's Tokyo a and China. I'm not. So I'm not actually. You're saying you're being. I'm actually telling you the truth. No, but I'm not sure it's about the whole bit. She's a bitch and a Yeah, cunt. you don't just bracket strippers yes. or exotic dancers as hoes. That's disgusting. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter if she's got pictures or videos of her all over the gaff. Yes. Sucking on no, things. You can't, you can't just brand her a, 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 a bitch, bitch and, and a cunt. cunt. No, you can't do that. Who said right. that? I did. Oh, wow. That's Why? a bit deep, bro. She's taking and she's helping to promote skin lightning cream oh, yeah, in yeah, my yeah. country. She is a bitch and a cunt. Fuck that. No uh, sugar coating on this. I'm not co signing that. So you know, this cream so is legal in the UK. She's a well, bitch in a cunt. Your whole chest is out, bro. Rah. She's a bitch in a cunt. I'm just, I, don't I, don't I just came here to say, really. Fangs on the claws are out. I hear that word, though, still. I've, I, just, I just came here to say, really. Hashtag that Game of Thrones. We have to acknowledge that the Cameroonians of Africa are the Jamaicans of Africa. Just want that to be known. <laughs> I thought you were going to expand on well, Black most China, people man. Nigeria are, though, but we, we, no, I, I kind no. of agree with you on Cameroon that. Cameroon is on the Jamaican. They wear the same trousers. Well, yes, actually. and the same shoe. Yeah. And they do wild stuff. <laughs> wild, wild, wild. But um, uh, this thing, uh, it's like this, isn't it? She's out to make her money. The Africans, sorry, the Cameroonians. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's two, it's two different Africans, though, isn't it? It's two different it's Africans. It's different Africans. Because <laughs> the Caribbeans, and, I mean, the Carib- I'm sorry, the Cameroonians and the Nigerians working in tandem to do foolishness. One's, pro- 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 it, um, uh, one's obviously paying for them to do the promotion and the other one's allowing them in the country to do such promotions. It's sad, anyway. I'm, I'm sick of shaders in my I'm sick of people feeling that they have to blight in their skin. I'm sick of going to our houses and looking them in the face. And they look like Caesar in the hands and a normal black person in the face. <laughs> it's just mad. Caesar in the hands. <laughs> Caesar. Yeah, because you notice they got like black, uh, yeah, and, and, the, and, and then, then white, the white, white, white yeah, bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. just ridiculous. I'm sick. It's a sickness. It's an illness, actual illness, I think. And it's something that is needs to be um, actually uh, categorized because I think it's a mental illness. It, you know? it most certainly is. Apparently, according to the World Health Organization, Listen to this. What percentage of Nigerian women do you think apparently use uh, lightning cream on a regular basis? 35. Five. 77%. Wow. According to the World Health Organization. Come on, you're going to say World Health Organization. Se- uh, well, world, so the world, world Health Organization. organization. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I believe It's that. higher. Because what you have to take into account is you're thinking about bleaching cream as in the extreme one. Mm. They, they use creams that are for um, even in your tone or what mm. have you, that may be not as strong as the bleaching, bleaching one. So they, they might take over a period of five years, you'll see them, they might lose a shade and a half, maybe two shades. 77%. Yeah, yeah. but so that, I'm saying that all these cream users are included. So there's the extreme ones and then there's the ones that are using cream that has lightning products in it, but it's not necessarily directly a lightning cream if that makes sense. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Like it's not promoted. It's not it's mm. as a, this is a lightning cream. It's just, oh yeah, this is just a, uh, a blemish, in, yeah, uh, blemish uh, removal or even a, or even yeah. all them kind of things. So yes, yeah, 77%. Well, I'm reading this off the BBC website, this story, and um, they got a tweet here by uh, our girl Sincerely Tops and that's, they've stamped her on on their on their webpage. Who's that? Um, Sincerely Tops. Uh, BBC News. Uh, BBC uh, News. Okay. Yeah, BBC News have, have put her tweet about Black China up there. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, so big up yourself. There's, there's um, a video that has gone around long before this. It's um, If you go on YouTube, 
and you type in Angel IKYG, uh, there is a video that he posts about a uh, skin lightning cream and it's about 21 minutes, but it goes deep into the root cause of skin lightning cream, skin lightning, self-hate and all of that kind of stuff. And it, trust me, it's recommended. I watched it today with my sister and my mum actually. And it was, um, it's an outstanding watch, man. Trust me. Angel IKYG on YouTube about skin lightning. Do you think we're ever uh, like skin lightning is going to be eradicated? If so, when? Like racism, st- I don't think so. No, nah, I think it's shadism st- here to stay still. It's ever growing market and it's very much, Im- well, it's, you've seen 75% it's growing. It's the, growing, and growing. The, the problem, the problem, 77%. <laughs> the problem, 72%. The problem, 10%. the problem with this. <laughs> 10%. <laughs> The problem with this whole um, shadism thing is that um, it's not just being perpetuated from outside of the community. The community is also perpetuating it. So imagine, if you will, um, a problem that is being re-energized or given new energy from the sufferers of the problem and the oppressor of the problem. So you get this massive snowballing effect where it now... The people outside the pressures don't have to work so hard to do it mm. anymore because we're we're already spilling it ourselves. So, in order for us to get to a point where we eradicate it, we have to get to a point where we can have the conversation about it in such a way that people can take a step back and objectively look at what is being done for the reasons that it's being done and appreciate that maybe those reasons are not of great value. The problem we have is we on one hand we say we don't like the bleaching thing but then those people who are in those societies and i'm saying that because i'm in the diaspora it's slightly different same story but slightly different in effect those people that are at home are seeing that their friend who started using bleaching cream and then all of a sudden got lighter would seems to have now more opportunities even though they both went to school together they've got the same education they've got the same whatever whatever so they see in the real world hang on a minute if if you want to talk on the work level, they seem to be doing better that way. If you want to talk on a social level, other guys seem to be more interested in this woman or other girls seem to be more interested in this guy since they got lighter. So we have the problem within ourselves. It's not it's not a thing where we can say, oh, yeah, I agree. So it's, I don't know. I don't know how we how we can stop that. I'm not, I don't blame outsiders. It's, it's yeah. I mean, it's the Eurocentric view of beauty which has been imprinted on us, you know. And to get that off and away and to be removed from us is is very difficult, you know. It's boy, it starts from the kids, man. And even then, they're gonna have friends that haven't been taught. I'm gonna so, say something radical. I just realized. Sorry no, to worry. jump into you there, but. I'm going to go as far as to say, we say we don't care about the oppressor, but it might actually be the oppressor that ends up being the one that saves the situation. Because if, what you have to understand is they've pushed their standard Mm. and we've taken up their standard, yeah? And we've decided because getting by in their world requires these things or these things seem to make us get by more in their world, then if the oppressor turns around and says, well, you know, this is the new thing, those that will start to to slide that way. Because if you notice, as much as the weave and everything became a thing and the skin bleaching became a thing and all that, white people embraced big bottom and big chest. Notice that. So as much as the sisters who are wearing weave and who are bleaching well, their skin are concerned... White people always love big chest. Oh yeah, okay. But so notice that the sisters who are doing the bleaching and wearing the weave and all the rest of it are not are not in any hurry to try and get rid of bottom or breast because that's also part of the accepted culture. You know what I'm saying to you? So I'm saying that if the oppressor then decides that natural hair of the black variety, c four c or whatever it's called, is now the new thing, I think that there will be an upsurgence of black people that will go that way. Wow! Have I'm, you not have you not noticed already? It's more or less slightly happening because you've seen this whole um, fad of these white girls tanning themselves or making themselves look mixed race. We're getting there. So it's it's I mean, just, it's just until it starts to level out and then it starts going in the opposite direction. The only problem we have is that the oppressor doesn't want the the image of a black woman. The oppressor wants the woman the image of a um, a racially ambiguous woman Mediterranean who can be anything. But then it's it's going further in direction, like you're saying with the big bottom and the the thicker lips and the 
Or from, or, or from, from a or still Mediterranean, Mediterranean looking woman, not so much from a black woman. But then slowly it, it may get darker and darker. But no, like what you I said, I don't think they'll ever accept the black woman. You don't think so? I mean, like what you said, though, simple would having the conversation. The conversation's been had a number of times. It's just that we're not listening because we're happy to see the no. fact that um, Yolanda's got lighter skin and she's getting more opportunities. Maybe it's time I do that and get those opportunities as well. I'll be honest with you. I don't think we've had a conversation. I think we've had the same situation that we always have where we have one group of people that are telling another group of people what they're doing is trash, is rubbish, is stupid. Why are you doing it? But that isn't a conversation. That is an admonishment from one side to the other. It's Brexit all over again. Yeah, basically. So mm. the conversation is is something that is completely different. We have to get to a space where um I'm well, I don't want to say no judgment, but it has to at least one side has to feel like they're not being judged. In real life it's not gonna happen because you have the enlightened, which I'm gonna call people that don't do these kind of things, um, including uh like relaxing your hair and stuff That's like that. Irony, irony there, the enlightened. And then we have um <laughs> the, the, the people that are on the other side. And they're always not everyone's gonna be enlightened. It's just that simple. So you're always gonna have people on the other side. They're always gonna that's the end of it, basically. Mm. Unless you have everybody that's conscious and enlightened or, 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 or woke or whatever. And that's not life. Life goes in, in gradients and hierarchies. And it, trends. And and yeah. And there you go. Mm. So can I, can I, but um ban uh China and uh, black China and what she's doing over there. Man. I already black China as well. But, um, <laughs> For real though. Can I ask a can I ask a question? No. <laughs> you ask the question if you can ask the question. You already asked the question. You can say, yeah, do, do you feel like of that? Of course that, you can. You feel like that secluded tribe has um, colorism problems? No, no, no. <laughs> imagine, though, imagine, imagine. They probably do. Oh, they got nothing else to dis- distinguish themselves from. That's probably the one light skin woman. Remember, they always look. People as human nature is always to find the thing that distinguishes you from the other human and make that a problem. That's what it would do. Do you, think, do, you, do you think that tribe will have that though? They'll no. have something. They will have something, but they'll have they, beef. But yeah, but it'll be it'll over be something, something that looks different. Maybe like one person's got extra toe or something, and that'll be that one that we that well, everyone. Not one. It has to be some people. Even in nature, be. you have that. It's true. It's just how it is. Yeah. No, a disabled uh, calf or something will get shunned by its mother sometimes. You mm. know. But anyway, survival of the fittest. That's it. Go ahead. Answer, ask the question. So um, Robert De Niro got broke up with his wife. Yeah. Oh mm. damn! Yeah. So I was, the old person, the two old people, as far as I'm concerned, broken up. So I was wondering if he was. Married for 40 years or whatever, and you're all 65, whatever, and you decided at that time you don't like each other anymore. Would you actually divorce the person or would you just carry on? Some people want their end times to be happy, so they just want to get rid of it. Yeah, but would you, what are you going to do? Depends. I don't know. It depends. Who's been married 40 years? To, I'm just to saying, like, would you, but would you, would you do it? Would you just say, you know what, my kids, the kids are old. We maybe stayed together for a while because of the kids. They're now left their nest. They, they're fully capable of doing what they're doing. I don't like you. You don't like me. We don't stay, we don't sleep in the same bed anymore. You know, we don't do the same activities. Would you divorce them? I, I don't think anyone answered because nobody wants to divorce. But it depends. If you've been with somebody forty years, it, then that's a whole different realm than any of us are in. Once you're in that realm and you don't love the person anymore or you don't care for them, if there's no beef, you might even just get to the point where I'm here now ain't it? and I've been there. I ain't got ten, more than ten years to go. And where am I going? That's what I'm saying. Will you just stick it out? No, no, I don't know. You know, because cheap. No. I, no, I don't know if I'll stick it out because you know what was was it us that were talking about it the other day when you got two old people together and one dies, the other one dies almost immediately yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I don't want to get to that stage in it, so I'll bust out. You're really dead, but after four years, you must be dead by then. Yeah, no, not necessarily. That's when you love them. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to leave, if you both don't care about each other, maybe that that tie is not there. Can you imagine starting your your? No, I, I don't know how old Robert De Niro is, but can you imagine starting over again? Maybe sixty five. He hasn't got. He hasn't really got a problem. Yeah, he's got money. Exactly. But, but if he was a less, you know, man that just was retired, you just needs. got your pension. But, but you hear a lot uh, of these stories of uh, elderly single couples that have find, found new love and they get married, single, you know, in their... Single couples? Uh, elderly... Listen. Uh, sorry, in their elderly single people okay. who uh, get married, um, you know, in their 60s and 70s, isn't it? you hear these stories that they go to these clubs and what have you and then they meet somebody and they kind of fall in love again. Yeah, and you saw that, that's you saw that real love. You saw that right? video in the old folks home. Oh, jeez. That's that real love though. Imagine if you can't bang still. 
Well, that means that it's only for it's only wait. for the conversation. Yeah, but you, companionship. Can you imagine? But you you're assuming that when you're at that age, banging is as important. That's what I'm saying. Imagine it's only for the companionship that you're now meeting a person. Can you imagine if sex was not a thing at all? All it was was the companionship. But that's what a lot of um, couples do when they nice. decide to. Uh, not have sex before marriage that they purposely want to find out if they can be compatible uh, as compatible as, as uh, you know as a, a proper couple where sex isn't a major part of their relationship mm-hmm. to the woman. when they you know get in there and, and then they, they tell them no 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 way Man, man's <laughs> talking about Ghanaian relationships Christian don't suck pussy <laughs> 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 and, in, and, in the, and in the in the Old Testament it said thy shall not suck of the vagina for it unless, is unless you bless the forbidden fruit or was it not come split did a man just say <laughs> unless you bless it yes. oh my god Dash that, dash that word there. Um, so I was, on it. I was going to uh, branch off from oh. the colorism issue and uh, saying that oh, you know the black women and talk about this uh, rap man Who's that? Uh, Ratman is the dude that did uh, what's it? Uh, Shiro story. story. So he's been um, picked My up G. by uh, Rock, Rock Nation. Rock Nation. No. That's Jay Z's uh, no com- company. What you're about, bro. Well, he did this thing called Shiro's story. Y- I, you really like it? Part well, one, two, yeah. and three. You really like? I it. still haven't seen any of them, but I'm going to. But it's it's highly loaded. And I've, what does he do? He raps. So he, he raps a basically, story. Yeah, he raps a story, and um, they show basically he's a rap song, but it's the videos are like actual programs, like mini, mini, mini programs, basically. Okay. So they will rap a bit and then there'll, there'll be normal acting throughout the bit of the, 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 the uh, video. Right. Then he'll rap another bit and then he'll be acting and then he'll rap another so bit. So do you any of you know... They're, print, they're about 10 minutes long. Sorry. I thought it was about 20. I don't think it's... No, it started off 10 and it starts getting longer the more and more he okay. gets on. Um, do any of you know or remember Prince Paul or Prince of Thieves? Yep, his concept album. Yep. Of so there's a video there. So for all of you people, it, it wasn't shy, if this is anything like that, I don't know. But if you go back and watch the video, because there is a long video for Prince Paul, Prince of Thieves, go listen to the album and watch the video, because the video is basically that. So it's, it's a it's story. Very, it's very similar. And uh, but he doesn't rap it. He uh, Prince Paul is a producer, and he gets other rappers to 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 play different parts. Uh, it's very good. A very good concept album from about fifteen. Yeah, long time. 15, ago. fifteen years ago. Or so I'm old. All right, but anyways, so he's doing his first film now because he's hooked up with Rock Nation. He's been given his own record label and he's been given all these these resources now to make his own film. Yeah, he's got his own record labels. Uh, wow. Yeah, to, to assign who he wants. I like what Rock are doing. Um, so he uh, apparently directs the Shiro stories as well, yeah? I f- believe so, But yeah. he, can't, he counts himself as the right director. So he's look, he's done a casting thing and he's got uh, a few different parts here. So one is Marco, who is male, 17 years and black. Uh, Hakim is male, 17 years and black, Nigerian origin. Uh, there you go, the actor. You can pass for 17, maybe. Uh, Dwayne is male, playing a, a 17. He's black stroke mixed race. Uh, and then you have... That's for simple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> you know. Leah. Uh, sorry, no, you have Karina. Sorry, you have Leah, uh, who's female, 17 years and black. Uh, Karina, female, 17 years, who's white or Mediterranean. Cheyenne, female, 17 years. So, uh, um, sorry? Is that two Karinas? No, Leah and Karina. Um, Cheyenne, who's female, 17 years, black, stroke, Asian, stroke, Miss Rakes. Why are you giving everybody, like, how many in, in the cast? No, it's important. There's only, it? there's only eight, but people don't let me finish, innit? So um, there's Gallis, who's male, between 25 and 32. He's black, stroke, mixed race. Simple. And Tyrone, who's male, 25 to 35, and he's black. And for some reason, he's from Tottenham. So, but out of those eight, you had um, three girls and only one of them can be black. The other two is even going to be Mediterranean and Cheyenne, who can basically, basically, she's black, Asian or mixed race. It's like whatever. Does it, but all the other men, apart from one who's mixed race, are black. And um, so what do you think it is about... This basically, somebody pointed out that this is a bit... Bit funny. You have all these characters, and all, most of the men are black, and then you only have three girls, and, and only one of them can be black. Why? And there was so a, five there was guys a, and three girls. There was an issue with that. Well, um, that doesn't make. Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. I I don't, actually don't see the issue with it because you haven't seen the story. You don't know what it's about. But there was backlash about it. So he he, he got some. He caught some heat for not promote or not casting for black or strictly black. Um, uh, female actresses 
You know, like you said, you don't know all the stories, innit? Does anyone feel that he should he should get gunned? Depends. Or, uh, I don't think he should get gunned. But if it is, um, if it were me, I know what I would do. You know, I'm I, all I'm all for putting as many of my black brothers and sisters on the screen. You know, but um, each to their own, innit? But I don't know what the story is about, so. No Kudos one knows the him. story about it. Good luck to him, mate. not been released yet. But that's his joke, yeah, because this happened before. Um, it happened with Chipmunk. Um, he had a, a, a snippet of a video that went out. And um, it wasn't even one scene. I think it was just a screenshot, yeah? Mm. And he was on a boat and yeah. all the women in the boat were white. They went for him. Then this was a... Apart this, from one. Apart from one, sorry. They went for him and this was just like a, a shot of the actual video not the actual video itself they went for him I don't know if it was a week later or a couple of days later the video came out and then it became quite obvious that that was the only scene where there was a minority black female presence and the rest of it so like people like to jump the gun too quick these days isn't it so yes on paper that sounds like some, but I don't know what the, the roles are if that black girl who's playing the black role there comes out to be the angel out of all of that uh, are we going to be upset now that the other two girls are not black or are we going to be happy that in it, if the other I girls think, are crackers I think, I you think know what there I'm saying? is something in this um, <laughs> are black women represented enough on British screen for example we're over represented yeah, bruv over in British screens you're over represented we are okay if you do it by percentage okay okay yeah. then okay let me change the question do you see enough black women on British screen I see more than enough black women on British screen if you're looking at the numbers. I don't, I don't, personally. I don't think that there's enough. Listen, the Chinese got something to complain about. The Koreans got something to complain about. I don't care about them. Bro. Well, the the thing, we're, it? I'm just talking about my people. Okay, then. And I'm, I, all, all I'm saying is, if it were me and there were uh, three positions or four uh, roles uh, that it didn't really matter what race they were. Like I said, I don't know the story. If it was just my story, I would have four of them as black women. Let me ask you a question. And one of them could be a crackhead or whatever. I was, it, to me, it's about employing them. Let me, let me ask you a question. More than, more than the actual story, but hey. For every hundred people you see on TV, do you think... Uh, how, how, how many of them are black? Sorry? For every hundred people you see on TV, how many, are, how many of them do you reckon are black? I'll be guessing. You want me to just guess? Just, yeah, just a, just, a, just a pluck out a guess. <laughs> Every hundred, maybe five. But then we're overrepresented. Okay, and then I just said and that I, I would uh, like to see more. That's all. Then, then it's not really fair, then, is it? I you want to see more, not man? Fair. Let's see more, and man. Who cares more, about man? fair? Take your people to fuck Africa if you fair. want to see more. Like, yes, fuck any, fuck off there, yeah. any, any country in it Africa. It ain't been fair for us for a long time, mate. Fuck that. Absolutely. Watch BET, bro. Um, in relation to this project, it always comes down to the production. Yeah, uh, yes. The actor will speak. The expert. <laughs> Because in, in the production, your CD, who's your casting director, will look at the list and say, all right, we can make so-and-so this colour, we can make so-and-so this ethnicity, we can make so-and-so this ethnicity. PC. The end of the line goes to the producer because they're bringing in the money and they'll say, right, we want this, this and this to look like this. The writer may have written it, the roles for all black, but at the end of the day, your casting director and your producer will have the end say in who's going to be in it. That happened in the the hate you give. Happens in the hate you give. Yeah, right. happens in a lot of movies. So I'm saying movies. this year, if we're gonna be upset because there isn't enough black female roles in this thing, I was I'm gonna say for myself that I'm prepared to sacrifice the two out of the three roles for black women in that thing. If then we hear on the other side of it that the rest of the cast, and when I say cast, I mean behind the scenes lot, the boom. Mike people, the the people that are doing screens. Yeah. If they're all black, oh, bruv, what are you complaining I'm not, about? I'm not saying that I'm upset. I, I said that I don't know the story in it, so I can't really pass comment. I just said if it were me, I know what I would do. A lot of black women was upset because they feel like they're always the, the on the back burner. And they already assume that this person is going to be like the friend. They're not going to be the main person. They're going to be the ugly friend. And you know, like It'll a bit, like, um, to well, a bit like a bit like coming to America, where the dark skinned sister was the uglier sister than the light She was one. buff though. Yeah, we know this, but the, in the in the time that it happened and in the film, she was the one that everybody was the second the hand me down. Can I give you the descriptions of the three black women? Because it gives you a little a short description. I, that's why I don't know why you didn't say that. That's the important part. Well, this is the long thing. Let it go. Let it go. Go uh, on. Anyways, um, so 
free no, the, the free women, sorry, okay. sorry, the free yeah, just women. Just to make sure because, okay. you know, we yes, we should be make right. sure yes, that the information is yes. correct. All right, so it's the make sure episode. Karina, who was the white stroke Mediterranean, is classed as popular, fun, and adores no attention. Cheyenne, uh, who's the black stroke Asian stroke mixed race, is strong, straight talking young lady, no nonsense, and not one to mess with. And uh, Leah, please, who is please, please. Who, who is definitely the black, uh, is perhaps a non obvious beauty with a good soul. You see, she's confident and knows her own mind. And in underlined, she must be able to sing. <laughs> nah, fuck <laughs> it, no. Is he kind of pissed off now? That, that makes it seem more wait, worse, I, because, I know, because I know the story, the background bit. That's why I didn't say nothing. Shucking and driving. That's why I didn't say nothing when you look, was like, well, why, why? <laughs> so they took the piss. <laughs> <laughs> must be able to sing, you know. Fuck you know, bro. Did, did that casting breakdown come from the dance actual production well. company? Yeah, I O casting. Can Have you heard of dance? The non obvious, yeah, the non obvious beauty. What the fuck is a non obvious beauty? What does that mean? That doesn't it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on, on the real though, you, we all know what they mean by you know. I, you know, I don't. What does a non obvious beauty the, the mean? Non obvious one is the one that you the, you, not the lighty, bruv. Not the lighty. Yeah, she's a dark tar that you and you look at her. Not the one friend. that you will look at and be attracted. to. Hold on, which is Destiny Child? The one, the the dark one again. Michelle. Michelle. No, Kelly. Kelly. Kelly's, Kelly's, the, the, Kelly's the non-obvious beauty. beauty. She's the one that you have to grow up and realise, hold on. It's, yeah, it's, it's, Kelly's, it's, oh, it's Kelly's nice. It's Kelly not a nice one. Like, well, you, because oh, it, oh, because, oh, Beyonce's gone now. Kelly's oh. the dark-skinned sister in Coming to America. Yeah. Fuck. That's the non-obvious obvious beauty. beauty. Come on, look. You see it. So, so is that, is that the way of saying dark skin? Look how many girls, look how many girls you see um, in films where they've got the dark-skinned friend who's the mouthy one. And blah blah blah, and then the light skinned girl is the one that you. In fact, that same film that we watched the other day, the the one with the weave, or the way she cut off all her hair. Yeah, you notice how the the, the one that Molly in it, Molly's is her friend. Napoli ever after. Yeah, you notice how the light skinned girl was the popular one. All the men liked her, and Molly Molly was the um, it, she, I can't remember her name in the film. She was the mouthy girl. one. Was it that? Is that the same film? I don't know what you're on about. I, I, know, I remember her friends, but her friends weren't in the film that much. No, what film are I watching? There's a different film. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, um, Night School. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Night School. Okay, so Night School is a film with um, Kevin Hart and uh, what's that? What's that woman's name? Tiffany, Tiffany Haddish. Haddish. Tiffany Haddish. So Kevin Hart's going out with a woman who's light skinned and you know she's very nice and she's yeah, dainty. Yeah, yeah. Ah, like, you seen it, yeah? Yeah. And then the friend who's Molly from Insecure is yeah. the. Dark skinned friend who's mouthy, always cussing him behind his back. I want you to see his neck. His neck. That's exactly like how they made it. Always shaking his neck. That's what they do in most films. You always have the light skinned girl, and then you have the dark skinned girl that's the, the, the friend. Either she's mouthy or she's the non obvious beauty that after the man's finished with the light skinned girl, he then decides, oh my gosh, you you are actually the, the ugly the true one. Well, the, one. Sh- the true one that I'm supposed to love. Let me find you. In, no. in Boomerang. Was the one that you went for after was she darker or well, what? I'm a time no. was a bit darker than um, Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Halle Berry, Halle Berry, Halle Berry and, was still light skin. Yeah, Halle Berry's light skin. Robin too. Gibbons, isn't it? Robin Gibbons was a bit darker than Halle Berry. Oh, so you went well, Robin Gibbons was again. The she was the dangerous aggressor. one. Yeah. She was the this. She was. She the was the next nice Christian. girl. And you know what's so you know what's so upsetting about all this? Yeah. It, 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 it upsets you now. Before you didn't get, no, didn't get I'm saying it. I'm, I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying like well, no. What you've just talked about now. What's upsetting about that is that it is prominent in Nollywood movies as well. It is prominent in Nollywood movies. They got another theme that they but bring they have with Nyash. no, but they've got another theme that they bring with it as well. That when the person comes from the village or from the rural area, they have their hair natural. The minute they Happy come to town head. and they step up, their transformation. All occurs. of a sudden, the weave just pops out from. Do they afford it? It's, that's a money thing, though, isn't it? Um, that's I, like a money I thing. I think something funny in, in relation to all of this. A lot of the times, when you see in in briefs and castings, when they do the breakdown, they always put any ethnicity to make it general and broad to give everybody the opportunity. They don't discriminate because they do any ethnicity. So only after you get into the door, they decide who they want, right. and more often than not, they'll pick. The lighter version, right? So you know, we we would like a a, a male with a with a broadish type nose, uh, uh whitish type lips, uh, dreadlocks, um, f- f- a certain type of thick thicker hair, but uh, uh, but you could be any ethnicity, any any ethnicity. <laughs> <laughs> you get a white guy, can, you know, can, can run run that's run me. Fast. Or they'll say, can we have more of a? Do you know Ricky Whittle? Yes, more like Ricky. Yes, you know Ricky, don't you? 
to be like, all right, cool, fine. And then what's that guy's name? The one we talked about last week, he's done the transracial thing, just rolls up saying. there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You right. get a white guy. <laughs> They'll say, well, that's me. Yeah. Even touching on that, which is funny again. Sorry, I, I did a commercial. I'm not plugging anything, but I did a commercial one. Plug. I was I was part of a family, so my wife was <laughs> considerably lighter than me. You had a wife? A wife. Oh, wow. And so then you were two, the black stud. Two mixed race children. You yeah. were the black stud? I was the black stud. Oh, no, no, no. So you had a you had a black wife with two mixed race children. No, a very fair fair skinned wife. No, she could race. she could pass for white. Yeah, okay. But white she passing. was yeah white pass. Is this a commercial that we're gonna see? Um, quite possibly, yeah. Yeah, that's the agenda that they're pushing out there now, isn't it? It is in most most, most commer- commercials most now. Most commercials yeah, yeah, you see, yeah, it's yeah. a mixed family. It's true, yeah, mixed families now. And it's and, the, the, and now you've called and, and and the thingy bob, the dynamic is. Anything for Typically, mine. the man is the Wide. black one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, it's mad. You want you wanted blacks on TV where they can't be with other blacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they gotta have a mixed baby. You're segregating these you know, blacks. You know how that triggers triggers black women though. Sorry. Triggers them because the one time you see black fathers is with a white woman. Yeah, I know. Mm. <laughs> But it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it brother. It's, and that's annoying. why a father is important in your life. No, that's annoying though. That's annoying. I can see why you get triggered. I get triggered. I'm by triggered. It. I'm blatantly. I, when I see it, I'm just like watching TV with my dad is deep because we won't say nothing while we're there and the advert will finish and I'll be like did you notice that and he'll be like yeah, yeah but, I saw it yeah, the but black unit is not it. something they like to promote heavily no. and even when they promote the black unit like they did in the Tesco advert they had the dog at the, at the dinner table eating pork I'm like what the fuck is that mm. yeah that's that like that's a black family Christmas that's and when the they dog eat was a whole pork, pork you know? and the dog's at the dinner table since when it's since true. when is dog even lying in the house dog. since when did they even call it dog, dog in the dog. first place dog yeah. mm. nonsense you had that guy from um, uh, uh, what's that uh, that Netflix show that's been cancelled? Um, House of Cards. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. He said that um, he's with a white woman. Yep. And he uh, openly said that uh, please, well, please, 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 when please, I was uh, broke and had nothing, oh, uh, the only one that took me she in. was she stayed by my side. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Or you know, this, the white one was the only one that. Now, did kinda... he say that, or he said her? Because that's fine. If people say why are you with this woman, he's like, listen, I've been with her before. I was popular. When I was broke, she was there with me. That's what then, Ghost said as well, isn't it? Then mm. uh, who, Jacob? No, Ghost from um, Power. Oh, I Hardwick. Because yeah, his but, wife is very ugly. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, is that that's. Did you say his, his wife, wife is very is ugly? Very ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he didn't just give her a standard ugly, you it's know. True. He stamped it with the very in front. He of said, and black women was upset, boy. Very the, like, yeah, but, yeah, but, did he actually is say she, it? Is my wife is very ugly? Hmm? Is she, is she, what, what color is she? She's white. She's, She's white. white. You know. <laughs> but but my man saying that is to suggest that a black woman wouldn't stick no, by his no, side. No, if, no, if, no. If you never said that. anything yeah, about it. Well, why is he saying that then? Because he, they were asking, why are you married to this woman? And he's telling you, I'm married to this woman. Because I love her. Because she's stuck with me. Because I love her. Yeah, but part of the reason why he loves her is it might not even be that he loves her. It might just be because she stuck with him. That might be the reason why he stayed. So I owe you. You know what? Yeah, but any woman can stick by him, innit? But that, that, not any woman did. That one did, didn't it? So that's, yeah, so he's defending his. What, what would because you do? she saw the potential in him. What would you do if somebody was attacking no, you for, go for going out with, with, with somebody? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I don't know what, how I could be famous and people are just attacking my wife anyhow, you know? I told you. I, I couldn't know, do right. it. I mean, good luck to those guys. I mean, when you enter into an interracial relationship, interracial relationship, you are, you know that there's going to be certain comments and that you will be a target. Um, so I, it's often that sometimes they prepare themselves for certain questions. So good luck to them, mate. If they want to go down there and do that, it's a, it's a bit deep, though, isn't it? And that's their business. It's a bit deep that you want to get into a relationship with someone and you've got to worry about what the outside world. Because it's the world that we live in. It's mad. See, I just called the man's wife ugly. That was unnecessary. The world is the world we live in. They they do not want to show a black man with a black woman on TV. Who's they? Society, uh, advertisers and all these people. It's harsh. She's not very ugly. It's harsh, man. It is a black man with a white woman or a very, very fair-skinned black woman with mixed-race kids. Is the woman in blackish? She's uh, the, the Ross woman. Right, yeah. yeah, she's light skin, isn't it? She's very light. I don't think I've seen an advert with with a black couple. You just no, spoke about one on Tesco. The Tesco one. I ain't seen. I don't know what he's on about, but the whole yeah, Tesco Christmas advert. The whole, the whole family's, family's black as well. Oh, wow, that's wicked. 
Which, but it's just Christmas, isn't it? It's only for Christmas. But it surprised me, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's your gift. Yeah, it surprised you because it's very uncommon that you will not see that. No, no, I'm not, yeah, it's uncommon, but it's also the other thing that I'm talking about with it the representation. Far, I'll battle you, bruv. The, the representation as well. well Highlight like, is fired, man. No. Um, <laughs> man said no. <laughs> I, just, I just don't think we should be looking to European media to give us the images that we need. What that, do you mean European media? Because you want to see it on the mainstream. Media. No, you want to see it on the mainstream. That's why I said go, go back home. If you want to see black... I can tell you now, there's two channels that we watch religiously in our household at the moment, yeah? One is called Rock, R-O-K, and the other one is called Inyanga, yeah? They're both African channels, mm-hmm. African-centric channels. They're free channels. Nothing but African movies on there, African news, mm-hmm. African music. Mm-hmm. You see blacks there. And that's fine. Watch that. Put, put, that put, put I know my... rock and that is watched in the house, but does that mean that we cannot see African couples on mainstream telly? Why not? Uh, well, this is woman unnecessarily. They always look very ugly. Why do you need to see that though? That's what I'm saying. She because I want to see a representation of myself everywhere. Yeah, but you're not, you're not, you're not, pro, you're not the prominent or predominant. She's not Sarah Jessica Parker. I don't yeah. care. What my issue is is that there, ugly. there is a, there is an agenda. To okay, so purposely. All right, so let me to to purposely. So it's up to not, us. No, no, no. Let me let me uh, sorry, sorry, show stav. that. Sorry, stav. On, let me let me do a stab on you on, now. Yeah, on TV. Let me do a stab on you. Yeah. Why, do, why do we have a problem with it? No, but wait. I'm saying. Let me do a stab on you. You repatriate back to Nigeria. Yeah, you're living your life. Yeah, and then all of a sudden on television you start seeing uh, white couples. Yeah, yeah. on t- on mainstream television start seeing white couples whether they're back where, home. Yes, you're in Nigeria. You're watching your sitcom or whatever it is, and there's white couples, and then you're watching adverts, and then there's white couples, and then and then you look at the country and you say, well, how is it possible that white people are on or are represented on at least every single show on our television? I would have said Chinese or Chinese, doesn't matter, yeah. And well, the, the problem, and the population well, the, of them in this country is so small. How is that possible? Yeah, but there, are you going to tell me you'll be all right with that? There is more of a percentage of black people in Britain and Europe than there is a percentage of the white people in Nigeria and Africa. And that's just a fact. So, no. yes, it is, bro. And Africa. Yes. South Africa. Okay. Zimbabwe. Y- Tanzania. Yes. Swaziland. Swaziland. Okay. Let's talk about Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> I know Nigeria more. You get me? But, but Even in Nigeria, know, there's more white people in Nigeria than you realise. Go to Joss. There's not, Go there's, to Joss. Uh, yeah, there's not as many as uh, white people than there are uh, black people and ethnic minorities in the UK. You get me? All I'm saying is that I know the agenda, I see the agenda, and I would just like to see a representation you of myself. You swear my question, though. No, I would just like to see a representation of myself on mainstream telly. Why is that a problem? I'm saying to you, you, you swerved my question. You've got completely. roots, man. Don't you, you watch roots? Luther? Don't you watch Luther, bro? You watch roots. I sw- you swerved my question. My question was, if you're in Nigeria and you're seeing white people pop up on the TV like that. I, I answered the question. No, how did you answer the question? By giving you my answer. I'm saying, so was, was you okay with that then? Okay. With, with the white people farting, bro? With white people being on the screen, are you okay with that? If the percentage of white folks was as much as the percentage of black folks here, then it would make sense, yes, because there's a lot of black people here. So if there's a lot of white people in... There's a lot of black in, people in, in London. Bruv, we're, yes, I know. We're like 4% of percent. the whole population. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. And I'm saying 4%, that percent. that's not a lot of black people. Okay, but we are in, we influence the nation, just like we've said. the, the it's Jamaican. not our country. So you've moved. Okay. So you've. No. You know what? I, the way how I see it is that we continuously make an excuse for what we want or what we demand. This is what I would like to see. It is always questioned by our own. I would like to see a representation of my own people, more of my people in this country. Please, what sir, I can please see, sir. Can I have more? What, what I can see is that there is a purposeful agenda of of not portraying a black couples on TV because it's almost seen as if. You know, having a, a black man and a black woman together just is not a representation of black people. And we spoke about this a couple of podcasts ago in a um in in a textbook that the black man is not with the black woman. You will always see that in uh, uh, black society. And this is what I'm saying that there is a hidden agenda. I don't like it. I'm just no, saying that, that about I would Caribbeans. Car- yeah, Caribbeans. Okay. Mr. Wolf, do you pay I'm, your TV license? I'm just saying that I would like, bruv, 
jokes aside, I, all I'm no, saying... No, no, I'm not even joking. Yes. Then you have a right to write to, to the powers that be and say, look, I pay my TV license to see this, this, and this, and I'm not seeing my people represented. That's only on BBC, though. Can you, can you please do some more representation of black families? Because I feel like I'm being disenfranchised. Well, like I said initially with the initial uh, uh, debate is that if it was down to me, I know what I would do. I would like to see more black women on TV. I'd like to see more black men on TV. That's all. And and with the adverts that we see the black man and the white woman and the mixed race couple, you see that a lot more. Why? Why are we seeing that? Because it kind of ticks all boxes, isn't it? All right. You got a darkie, you got a whitey. And it also, to a level, it represents what is actually going on in society. Because there is a lot of mixed relationships. There's more mixed relationships are there mi- are there than more- the same relationships. Is there? Is there more mixed relationships than I don't know if I can throw black it out there, but if you look at the whole country, again, not just London. U- not just London. Not just London, not just the UK. Not, just, not just Manchester, not, not just Liverpool. Liverpool. I'm just gonna I'll go as far as I say this. If you, just you know, Liverpool alone. Oh it, yeah. It's the most mixed race place on the planet. Yeah. yeah. So that's just one town. And Manchester. Manchester is very much like that town as well. Yeah. I'd so, like to know what the figures are if there's you know more interracial relationships. There probably than, are figures out there. Than, than black couples. Uh, we're done. I was gonna unfortunately try and talk about that, that that school that was banning them expensive clothes, but we have run out of time on this episode so let's do our church notes and our socials and get out of here let's start off with that I was actually going to say before we do our church notes I know we ran out of time and I was late and I do apologise does anybody remember one of their favourite episodes from our last hundred the one where I go home <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> look at his face look at what I love the headphones after he's done about five, halfway six seven farts and smell up the place it tired man. him out isn't it? that's his but way I'm of telling tired, us to man. go home isn't it it's two hours we started later than we were supposed <laughs> to I'm tired uh, I think I like uh, Stavro say I like episode 99 I'm, I'm thinking that might be my favourite episode cool oh, wow. maybe of this season the last one the last one I really like it I really enjoyed last it last week go and watch it listen <laughs> Simple. Um, I don't remember. I just, I just know that there was a moment where he said that Darth Vader was the original baby father, and I nearly died. Yes, I, I thought that was hilarious. That but been, that's one of the that's best. Like the pigeon, the the, the, the pigeon, pigeon one, oh, pigeon shit. figure. Yeah, oh, so that's, pigeon like, one. that's like yeah. the first one of the first ten, I think. Yeah, the pigeon comment and the Darth Vader comment yeah. was. Uh, oh, I nearly died, man. And then there was uh, something about uncle as well. He said something about uncle. He finished me off. That was the, I don't know what number that is, but that's the one. <laughs> Mr. Wolf. Um, I can't, I can't remember either, but I think that there was, uh, I can't remember. I'll be guessing which number, but there was a batch of episodes that I thought were just truly ex- excellent. Maybe around 78 or 79 or something like that, but I'll be guessing. But those early episodes with relation to Darth Vader and the pigeon, what was it about J- Jollof rice, isn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, the pigeon guy. The pigeon from, eating. You know what? I'm not gonna throw shade. I'm not gonna throw shade on our guy. <laughs> we but. got the whole episode. <laughs> yeah, it. without doing it. You get me. So I'll just leave it there. But large nah, up I to everybody one, for 100, man. 100. That was uh, episode uh, three of season two. Wow. The cats, dogs, rodents, and pigeon episode. <laughs> isn't that the one we were talking about? Their cats, their cats, when they had the cats. Um, we were talking when about they hear, when they hear pussy in it. <laughs> they don't they think it's talking to them when they're banging. <laughs> that's something wrong with us. Who was, saying, who was saying that they was they was it was you saying, wasn't it? Yeah, he was, was banging, banging and the cat came and, and the cat came and watched you banging. Yeah, 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 yeah. I come and touch me on the leg. I <laughs> 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 came and touched me on the leg. We did, bro. Hey, bro, what I, I bro what, and I told him I look at the cat. The cat's looking at me. I'm like, bro, what? I'm, I'm it's hungry, man. I'm like, yeah, all right, move, move, in it. Get the cat away. <laughs> I'm trying to get into the cat. The cat's scratching me. Come on, man. <laughs> the cat say, check, pussy. <laughs> check, pussy. Your favourite episode? Um, I can't even remember, but I do enjoy the episode <laughs> where... It said very ugly. Simple Wahala and Mr. Wolf were on by themselves. We wasn't there. Okay, so that's about, what, ten, six or seven episodes ago? Yeah. Yeah. That one was silky smooth. That, that was one. a very good episode. It wasn't the best, but it was very good. It's butter. <laughs> But I had to get his little dig in there with yeah. a couple of bits. That's Mr. Wolf answered. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, answered, man. Everyone's done? Okay, cool. You, you don't want to say anything other than the one I got to go home? Uh, I don't. Are we talking about just this season? Whenever. Yeah. Uh, if it's just this season, I don't know. 
If you talk about the ever, it's the one we were talking about. Where you, <laughs> and it's so bad. The one we were talking about, your domestic abuse. <laughs> might, be my, might be my favorite podcast <laughs> ever. Because <laughs> that was so funny. But <laughs> if you talk about this season... That must got a scary face. <laughs> if we're talking about this season... Eat cake anime. <laughs> you know what, actually? I want to play the that intro for that so one. Bad. Let me see if I can find it. I think I know the number. You know. Is it 24? Oh, Church notes, anyone? <laughs> you, oh, you, gonna... you carried okay. it on, that's why. Because I think I just think the intro for that was so funny. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right, fine. We'll find it's it while we say not... our church notes, isn't it? And we'll sign out with that. This is what I started on. We'll sign out with that. Find it and we'll do our church notes. Yeah. Simple church notes. Yo, at Simple Simon FB on Twitter. Um, I've got now to plug today because um, I didn't even know what I was going to come and plug. So, I would say to you, be good to each other. Bugs him alone, man. When I come true. Bike Agrove. Bike Agrove, man. Sproggy. Why I? Why I, lad? Mohala? I beg Wahala on Insta. I beg Wahala on Twitter. Mr. Wolf. AKA Mr. Wolf on Insta. AKA underscore Mr. Wolf on Twitter. I will, I, I, I do want to plug one thing. This is a lady called The Great. Griot, and that's why I wanted to get some kind of uh, way or idea of what Griot actually means. And she's a fantastic narrator, orator, orator of Black history. So go on YouTube, um, type in the Great Griot, and you will find Black history narrated in an amazing way. One of my favorite stories is one of Thomas Sankara. If you don't know that guy, get to know him. Fantastic man who is no longer with us, but the great girl on YouTube. Plug. Out of their skin, Tuesday, this Tuesday, the release date of this podcast, watch it on ITV4. It is Ian Wright and his uh, story about racism in football. When Tuesday and Wednesday, the release date of this, watch it ITV4, 10 p.m. Boom. Plug. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, it's D A T A C T O R on Instagram and the Twitter. That's your boy, the actor. I would like to plug Women of the Lens uh, Film Festival that will be on the 15th and the 16th of December 2018 at Close Up Cinema Centre, London. Tickets are available. They are between five and ten pounds via Eventbrite. I will be having a film that is screened there. Be called I Woke Up This Morning Wanting to Kiss You. Plug. Look at this man sleeping. Has check, he done check, anything? Check, check it out. Yeah. It's just me? Yeah. It's just you. All right, and um, I am Stavros Boss. You can catch me at Stavros Boss everywhere. Uh, collectively, we are at ESN Podcast. I didn't do this in the beginning, did I? Um, you can catch us at ESN Podcast on all your social medias. Use the hashtag ESN Pod to join in the conversation. Wish us um happy cen- centurion, whatever you want to do. Centenary. Um, okay, cool. Thank you. And uh, my Stavros says this week is episode 11. So zero zero eleven, season one of Eloquently Say Nothing, where this happened. <laughs> I didn't mean to to play that, bit. <laughs> that, that. That is how it used to start. Yeah. Are you sure that ain't a funny clip or something? Right, no, 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 no. <laughs> now, this is Stavro speaking here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour out my heart. I've been on the receiving end of domestic violence. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, I'm not even joking. Yeah. That's so funny. And these men know that I've been on the receiving end of domestic violence. And this is what the boys do. They did, laugh. Did, they try to, did she try to set you on fire? <laughs> <laughs> did she beat you out of your sleep? Come on, come on. Yeah, ask me about I'm going to hell. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much for you listening. You got some backlash for that, but fuck them. Wow. Thank you very much for listening to Eloquently Say Nothing for the past 180 odd episodes. Uh, we are out. And continually, we would like to say, if you ain't saying nothing, please say it well. Slag for life. All right. I'll talk to you screw that. This one wants to keep complaining on the podcast, man. <laughs>